We are live 8.01 p.m. in the Eastern Time. If you're watching this in the live, thank you for tuning in. I'm Steen Mobile Tech, and I have with me the Honorable Dennis and Stetson. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Glad to have you back. It's been a long time, and I'm very happy to have you guys return to the show. What's been going on, fellas? It's great to be here. Thank you for having us back. Uh, I don't know. I feel like some telecom news has been a buzz. Um, Mm -hmm. Some things happening here and there. A little bit of a lull, I feel like, in the summer. And I feel like we're getting ready for a bunch of new promos uh, this holiday season. But yeah, things have been going really well. Uh, Dennis, how, how are things with you, man? Yeah, things have been really exciting. Um, when I last told you, Anna, you know, I told your audience I'm doing schools. So school's going to be starting back up here soon. Um, the podcast that we do has been a lot of fun and exciting. Uh, I've been doing a lot of, like, uh, smaller projects that don't necessarily relate to the actual topics that we cover, such as the emotes that you put in your show, which I appreciate. I love the <laughs> fact that you added those. So you've been doing cool stuff like that, which has been fun. And... Uh, yeah, no, life's life's good. Oh, I'm in the house too. The new house we talked about. I'm in there. Congrats, you can man. see from the background. He's got a great uh, mountain view. No. Fu- futuristic, <laughs> man. It's like the Jetsons or something back there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, life life is good. And of course, I'm on this awesome channel where I got knighted uh, knighted by the SMT himself. That's right, brother. And I think, for the most part, I I, I want to say I have probably about 15 mods. You just never know when you might need a few. So you try to have a a surplus, you know, just a couple, you know, ready in the chamber or whatever. So, uh, yeah, this is the SMT Wireless Report podcast. We have our guest, Dennis, down here. And then we got Stetson to my right. And they are the, do I want to call you guys the hosts of bestphoneplans.net? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. So you guys host the website. You have the podcast on Stetson's YouTube channel. You guys do a nice job of covering so many different topics on the podcast. Uh, We do have some spillover in respect to what goes on in cellular. So I've noticed that whenever I watch a Stetson video, sometimes I get recommended my video. And I'm like, (laughs) what? (laughs) Like, how did the algorithm doesn't discriminate? It's just like, here, have some SMT while you're at it, man. Yeah, no, it's like uh, you have a main course and you have a side dish. Everything goes perfectly together. The flavors blend. It's just a delicious (laughs) meal. So we're happy to be here. And and that would mean, like, you guys would be the two of you. So it would be the salty and the sweet or the crunchy and, you know, all these different things. Oh, yeah. The yeah. peanut butter and jelly. Right, exactly. So um, the podcast has been great. I watch all your shows. I comment. I get involved in the live chat. I have so much fun in there. Uh, it's it's actually fun being a viewer as opposed to the host or carrying a show. It's it's a lot right. easier. And plus, I get to kind of like basically say whatever I want. I don't think Stetson <laughs> would he'd be like, cut it out. Sneak. <laughs> but like, it's kind of cool just being free to, to speak to people in the live chat and actually... I pretty much read everything they write because that's all I'm really doing. My ears are picking up what you guys are saying, and then my eyes are reading what the audience is typing. So it's it's a lot of fun on that side of it. For those of you that don't know who Stetson is or Dennis, do check out some of the links in the description box. I have the links for the YouTube channel, the website, and I also tweeted and tagged them in the announcement on Twitter. So you guys can check them out and follow them on Twitter. And I even put it in an episode of the most recent podcast. So there's all different types of things that you guys can do to check out what Dennis and Stetson are up to. I endorse, I co-sign, and as Dennis said, I knighted them. So <laughs> if that means anything to you guys, these are my boys. These are my people, man. So do support them and check them out there. And, um, and big shout out to Alex B before I forget, I, I almost forgot. Thank you for those generous Venmo donations supporting the channel. Uh, I do appreciate that very much. Uh, if you guys ever want to help out the channel, you could do a couple of things for me. You like my videos, you comment in the videos, and then you share them. That's the best thing you could do for me. Anything else is way above and beyond. All right. So thank you for that. Let's say hello to some people here. Yeah. The I homie see Mike Carlos. West. What, Carlos is here? Yeah, Carlos is here, the boy. <sighs> I got to start at the top, man. All right, I'll get to you, Carlos. We got Maverick. We have Joseph. Connor, good to see you. The homie Max Tech Studios. Yeah, what up, buddy? Try to get through all this. Kimon is here. Hashtag Mod Squad. Brother Keon is in the house. Alexis is here. 
the Apple 4K TV. Very nice piece of equipment there. Zeke is in the house. You got two of them. Oh, man. <laughs> Sheesh. What's up, Mo? MS is here. Ryan is in the house. Big Term is here. That's right. We got a trio today. Uh, my brother Siova is here. There's Carlos. We got him. Okay. Uh, we got Big Tone is here. Uh, Jay is in the house in attendance. Thank you for checking in. Back to, like, the education world, right? I got to, like, take roll call, take attendance. All right. Carter's in the house. Appreciate you guys for coming through. All right. I have a list of things, and I actually have a couple of games I want to play, reindeer games. Oh, wow. To, All like, right. I'm excited. Tech nerds and geeks, bro, this is, like, right up our alley. We're going to have fun with this, but the rest of them out there are probably, like, Sneed's a weirdo. Like, what is he talking about? Oh, man, they love it. They love it. That's why they're here. <laughs> What's up, Adam? What's up, Pat and Ryan? Good to have you guys. Okay. First, let's kind of do something, like, legitimate. Let's actually do something tech-related. I wanted to just discuss with you guys quickly. We don't have to spend too much time on it. I did a video covering it. I think you also did some coverage on it yesterday. Verizon responded with some hotspot plan updates. There are four plans. Um... I've always hated the Verizon hotspot plans. They've always been trash with lots of A's. And I think now they are more competitive relative to the data allotment. Mm -hmm. However, I don't like 720p. I don't understand this. Like Verizon has become the 720p network. Yeah. <laughs> AT&T is giving people 4K on like prepaid plans. T-Mobile's got Magenta Max. They kind of, like, disrupted the game. They went ahead and gave this incredible new uh, hotspot plan, too. They kind of set the trend, right? They, they Absolutely. Kinda, that's what they do. Verizon's like, okay, well, we don't want to be on the outside looking in without anything, so we're going to, like, tow the water and give people some new plans. Okay, two of the plans you can't have unless you're a Verizon wireless customer. Two of the plans that you get still are 720p, and they're the premium versions. Now, the rate is, is okay, right? So you're going to get uh, $60 a month, gets you 100 gigs of hotspot data. I think at and at 55 for the same plan, and I think T-Mobile's at 50. Right. So, so if it's data allotment, I'm pushing you to T-Mobile. As long as the reliability is there, as long as the performance is there, it's T-Mobile hands down. You're saving 10 bucks, And I think they're out the door on that price, too. Yeah, right, I mean, so. one thing I would keep in mind is for Verizon, uh, the $60 price is if you're an existing customer, right? So with T-Mobile and AT&T, those are actually prepaid plans. And you can pay the 60 bucks without having to be an existing customer, and you can just get the hotspot data. And right. then with Verizon, if you're like, all right, you know, I just want the hotspot data, that $60 plan jumps to $90. So I don't know. To me, Sneed, I feel like Verizon is pulling a Verizon, they're trying to ride on their laurels of being known as a premium wireless carrier, and in my opinion, just charge a whole lot more uh, for the same plan that AT&T and T-Mobile are offering. And I agree with the sentiment that Stetson's saying. I don't think they're competitive at all because when you look at these hotspot plans, I almost want to look at the price without a Verizon line. I think that's the more accurate way to look at it to a certain extent. Um, and if that's the case, then we're talking prices that are literally double or triple what AT&T or T-Mobile are charging. Like legit, like as Stetson said, I can go to AT&T and if I want to buy multiple hundred dollar, uh, excuse me, hundred gigabyte plans for 55 bucks, AT&T ain't going to bat an eye. But when we were talking about the Verizon plans, I learned something interesting. We were talking about the discounts. If you have like their, uh, get more. And so they, it only applies to one line. So you have to have a Verizon wireless line per hotspot line. Like that's your pairing if you oh, want to wow. get a get a second one, which so I you find need two lines. Yeah, exactly. On those premium plans, the top two wireless plans. Right. Yes, you could you could get it on the it's called Do More plan, mm -hmm. but then you sacrifice some of the perks. Like I actually mm -hmm. I like the uh, Play More plan as they call it because you get some perks that I enjoy like the Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus bundle. I think they're throwing in 12 months of Apple Music or something like that. So I enjoy those extra perks. Sure. But for people who want a hotspot device, that plan, uh, the Do More plan, will sacrifice the perks in exchange for 50% off promo, which can be up to $20 off uh, for the $40 plan, which is great. So it only applies to the look two, though. Here's how we have, to look, two, here's how we have to look at this, Dennis. The, it's, it's really important that you framed it that way. 
if you're an existing Verizon Wireless customer on their more updated plans, this is a terrific offer. If you're not on one of those premium plans, if you're on the 2017 New Verizon Unlimited plan, if you're on an old bucket plan, you're going to just have to pay the Verizon Wireless price, which is the 60 And then as a standalone, it's really not competitive. So we almost have to look at the, the hotspot plans in three scenarios. Number one, are you a Verizon customer? Number two, do you have a new Verizon Unlimited plan? Right? And then the price changes with each scenario. They're not inviting people onto their network with this plan. They're not saying, come over from T-Mobile. Not at all. They're inviting their own customers to pay up. You get what I'm saying? Because I, think about it. Nobody's going to Verizon from AT&T or T-Mobile to get this unless AT&T and T-Mobile are that bad. Like there yeah. literally has to be no tower in sight and just Verizon is there. Yeah. Or it's else just, why would you do it? It's not gonna happen. I think AT and T prepaid's plan is just so strong, you know, fifty five bucks for hundred gigs. And I think you know, AT and T's got the coverage too, and in more yeah, cases yeah. than not, they likely have the capacity. So I think that's the better move. And you can get yourself four K HD streaming, like AT and T's not gonna care about that kind of usage. <laughs> Verizon here is trying to charge you $110 for their top tier plan as a standalone option, only 150 gigs, and you're capped at 720p when you're not connected to their ultra wideband 5G network. And I think the real kick in the teeth, too, is the caveat when it comes to their ultra wideband network. They only give you 50 gigabytes to use afterwards, they cap you at three megabits per second on ultra wideband. Uh, that's, that's another thing that's really awful. You're on ultra wideband, and they're giving you three megabits per second. <laughs> if if so I was part of the Verizon team, even if I was working for Verizon, if I was part of the development of these plans, whoever proposed that, I would recommend for a, a, a resignation, like resign or get fired. You have like a day to figure this out. That is so awful. You have these millimeter wave channels, which are massive. We're talking about 800 megahertz of bandwidth. We've got four gigs on our iPhones right now in, in the CLE, four gigs. And you're going to give me three megabits per second <laughs> after I go over 100 gigs of data? We have a problem. But it's Verizon being Verizon, I think, is what you said, Stetson, right? Yeah, it's Verizon being okay. Verizon. It's Verizon being <laughs> So we can't say that we're surprised, but it is kind of crappy. I mean, I am it. surprised because if this was the Verizon I really knew, they would have took this as an opportunity to upsell even further and giving you a plan where you get unlimited high speed on that millimeter wave. I'm surprised they didn't do that with one of their more premium plans. They, this is unbelievable. I, I, one of the things I don't understand is that part, the ultra wide band three megabits after your data allotment. And the other is the 600 kilobits per second. Just give mm. everything three megabits. What is three yeah. megabits? It's nothing. not a lot. <laughs> it's nothing. So, and, that's and because actually, wait, wait, that's worse than Visible's hotspot. Okay. Because you, know, you know what it is? That's in three megabits gives you 720p. Yep. No, it doesn't. You no, know, 720p, you need five. five no, megabits. no, you can, you can do, I, I'm with Sneed. You can do 720p on three. Verizon, I can tell you, Dennis, from my use on Verizon, the three megs gets me 720p. Really? I, I can always, yeah, I can speak to Verizon on that. I, I don't know, buddy. I haven't really tested AT and T carefully enough for T Mobile, but I can tell you right now, it doesn't buffer at three megabits. So okay. if maybe I, I'm thinking that might be kind of where they're at with that speed. I don't know, man. It's awful. Uh, I'm yeah. not looking at this plan if I'm only if I already have Verizon's get more do more. That is well, here's, the only way. Here's another thing I was thinking about. If you were someone that was planning to use this hotspot at home, for example. Then you should just get Verizon's home internet. Cheaper, unlimited, better speeds. And if you're someone that's on the go, like someone that's going to be kind of like flexible and actually needs this to go places, uh, as Stetson alluded to, there is prepaid options that are out there that are so much cheaper uh, on the Verizon network. I mean, you could do the visible 5 megabits per second unlimited hotspot, which is enforced slightly. But you could also do like... Um, Maybe like US Mobile get like a, a cheap cheap plan and throw on the hotspot add on, and uh, there you go. Because they ha Stetson, can you do the data buckets with the hotspot on? Uh yeah, you can you can do the data buckets. I mean, you'd be looking at maybe thirty five bucks for thirty gigs of hotspot data, and that's like monthly prepaid. That's total. Like you don't that's standalone, right? 
But I don't think their plans would actually work in the hotspot device right now. I think they're limited to tablets. Yeah, but you could just throw in a phone, throw in a cheap phone. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, let me let me do a couple of shout outs real quick. We got a couple of super chats. Big shout out to John. Uh, you got the letter order wrong. It's actually DSS for dynamic spectrum sharing, a.k.a. Dennis Stetson and Sneed. Starting a new <laughs> podcast, the DSS <laughs> podcast. The that would DSS. be a good name. I know. Mark, appreciate your super chat. Thank you, man. Mark's always very generous. And I love Mark. Thoughtful. Mark, it's Thanks, so great Mark. to see you here. Thank you, man. Steve, uh, what, were your, what were your thoughts on these plans? Dennis and I, general sentiment, not great. It's Verizon being Verizon. Uh, what, what were your thoughts? Did you did you seem to like them? Like, are they a step in the right direction? They're, they're competitive if you're on Verizon already. They're not getting anybody to switch from T-Mobile or AT&T. Sure. They're just sure. not going to convert. So to me... I don't like them from an industry standpoint. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to change or help many people. Yeah. It, it might help people that have an old Verizon hotspot plan that sucks. That's really the only people I could think about that would benefit from this. Would it and make sense to just add another line to your account? Like, you know, grab another extra line or something or add a tablet line? I think tablets are what, like 20 bucks for a tablet and you get unlimited data? You know yeah. what this plan really made me think about, Stetson? Like, I would rather pray every day and just hope I got a node near my house or my work and be like, I just want this instead. Yeah. I don't want to get this hotspot plan. I'm just going to have unlimited hotspot for my phone because I'm on ultra wideband. That, I'm just that is the that. move, 100%. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dennis and I <laughs> even mentioned in ours, like, Verizon home internet is a better deal. Like get their uh, their LTE plan and yeah. even their 5G plan, we feel are much better options. You can't really travel with those, um, but for people who are looking for kind of a alternative home internet solution, we think that's the better move. So how about this for an idea? How about the fact that they revamp these and C-band is on the horizon? Like they didn't even wait for C-band to come out and then it would have been a whole new set of terms. Now, if they actually want to do it properly, they're going to have to revamp these plans. You're going to have to do 1080p. You're going to have to make it more competitive. You're going to have to include more. You're going to have to make it more feature-rich and more robust. Because I mean, you have no excuse once you have 100 million people covered in C-band in Q1 or Q2 I'm, or whenever that happens. I mean, I've gone on record in saying this, Sneed, but I don't foresee Verizon doing anything like that until like literally either end of this year but more likely than not not to like q1 and next year I because yeah. they even though we me and you know sneed that like they're kind of slipping in certain markets as far as market dominance in the eyes of the everyday consumer verizon is god tier you know they they had a decade worth of you know lt dominance and as far as like mindshare is concerned they can charge that premium verizon can sort of have that apple tax to them so to speak yeah. so they don't have to be competitive in any way because people are still buying. I mean, we saw even in their Q reports, people were predicting that they were going to lose subscribers, but they still had some some growth overall. I'm doing my part, and when people ask me for recommendations for service, I always tell them, you got to start with AT&T. You have to start there. I know you have bad experiences with them. We all did. All right, this goes back to like 1995 when your parents <laughs> got screwed out of a phone bill. I'm talking like home phone service. All right, you have to let that go because at this point, they are a legitimate competitor in pricing, feature richness, a uniform network with a lot of capacity, a lot of unique uh, network technologies. They've got a lot of small cells, CRAN. Uh, their, their, their plans are very generous. I mean, I was telling people last year that the Elite plan was the best on the market. And everybody's like, no, it's Magenta Plus. No, it's not. <laughs> no it's elite and then they finally actually decided to do like a commercial revamp of the elite plan telling people what it actually does this is the way the elite plan has always been now they just put it into the terms but that's yeah. the way it's always been i thought it was really funny we saw on the at&t website the terminology went from hd video streaming to 4k Video but when streaming. you ran a fast.com, Stetson, what were you getting? You were always getting 4K. <laughs> like, it's been 4K since exactly. day one. AT&T was just like, hmm, maybe, maybe this will look like an upgrade. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> New logo. Literally, yeah. all they did was put a fresh can of paint on it because 
it was it's all the same like even the whole unlimited there, there was no paint dennis there was no paint on it that was the problem they had this great plan that nobody knew existed <laughs> Yeah, but I was going to say, even when they had the 100, per, uh, 100 gigabyte priority data cap, it didn't matter because, like, there was so much capacity on the network. I will just say AT&T's biggest fault has to be their marketing team. They need to take a cue out of T-Mobile's book because you know, no one knows what AT&T is doing. Like, I remember when HBO, I know this is a, a little bit of a throwback, but I remember when HBO Max came out. Do you remember the confusion that people had over HBO Max? Like, people were like, what is this? Is this different than, like, regular HBO? How do I get it? Like... That, that just tells me that you're doing a bad job at uh, marketing to your consumers if you don't know how to tell them how to buy it. Mm -hmm. let's, do a, let's do a couple more shout-outs. We got some super chats here. Ethan, thanks for your super chat. He said, nah, you can't name the podcast DSS because DSS is trash. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's been terrible. Um, for me, it hasn't done anything special at all. It hasn't been worse, but it hasn't been better either. So I agree. Maybe we can't name it that. I guess SSD is better. Isn't that like storage or something? Solid state drive, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, and a big shout out to Alexis. Thanks for the super sticker. What do we got, like a dancing pair or something, or a bowling pair? Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, that's a pair that's accelerating <laughs> with uh, some pretty fast velocity right now. So That's nice. That's a nice. Yeah. Hey, Sneed, yeah, I got hey. a quick question for you, man. On the topic of DSS real quick, have Thanks, you been noticing? Man. have you been noticing any problems with 5G on T-Mobile's network recently? Yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> and then and here come the uh the pink people eaters. They're going to come and get me. But I've literally turned 5G off on my T-Mobile SIM. Wow. It's it's been so problematic for me. I'm dropping a video tomorrow and it's literally titled T-Mobile 5G is giving me fits. That's literally what it's called. It's giving me nothing but issues. Um I I'm at an N41 site, it won't connect. It's 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 it wants the standalone N seventy one, which is slow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm getting like forty megabits when I test the standalone five G. I can't connect to the N forty one, and then people are telling me, "Oh, you got to make a test phone call for it to connect N forty What? what are you? I don't want to do a test phone call every time Actually, I want to connect. Actually, that's that's what I band. do. Need every time I hit a stoplight, boom, I'm making a phone call. I'm making sure I'm connecting to the best network in that area. No, well, it, it, no gets, <laughs> it gets a little bit worse for me, Sneed. Out of my market, yesterday, we straight up just had a whole 5G like blackout. Like, oh. legit, my phone and LT, LT was also acting wonky too. My phone was literally connecting to good old school HSPA Plus, Sneed. Wow. Yeah. Good for old school. Mobile. For T Mobile. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so we had like a, a big issue. I mean, it looks like it's fixed. I'm connecting LTE, but like you, Sneed, I also forced my phone <clears throat> to connect to LTE. And the reason for that is because I've noticed that phone calls, I won't get any phone calls when connected to 5G anymore. So if I'm on 5G and you try to call me, my phone will not ring. You'll go straight to voicemail. Mm. It won't be until I... Can, I it won't those be problems in the 3G era, Dennis. People but yeah, it won't, be, calls. it won't be until I connect to Wi-Fi calling that I just start getting my phone blown up with voicemails. <laughs> Um, so I just decided just to go straight just, just straight back to LTE. And that way good. I get all my calls and texts. Yeah, it's good. Wow. So the nation's leader in 5G is having a lot of problems in their 5G. Well, it didn't say it had to be good. It just you know had yeah. to be nationwide. Just have to have wow. the icon. Yeah. <laughs> so we make a thousand pies per day. Don't worry that they taste like trash, but we do bake a thousand pies a day. And in this case, it'd be layer cakes, right? Yeah, so, yeah, they're big on the layer cakes. I don't know. They're going to have to really give this some attention. I mean, they're upgrading really fast. The upgrade pace across the country is incredible. It's commendable. It's worth celebrating. It's worth noting the Ookla, the Umlaut, the Open Signal. But we can't make calls. We can't receive calls. I mean, if this is Dennis's business line, we're in trouble. We're talking about somebody who's likely to churn. My brother-in-law texted me the other day. I can't take this anymore. I <laughs> said, what's wrong? He said, I'm missing calls. I'm dropping calls for work. He's like, is Verizon Postpaid worth it? I said, no. In Ohio, you can just have AT&T, and it's just as good. It's Verizon with capacity here. <laughs> you know, in Ohio. I, I, yeah. Because he, he's originally from Pennsylvania. All right, Dennis, he's actually originally from Pittsburgh. So when he had T-Mobile 
in Pennsylvania. He said it was okay. He switched to AT&T for work and loved it. I'm like, bro, you just got to go back. What are you supposed to do? I mean, he's getting a great deal. He's paying 100 bucks a month for two brand new iPhones and two Magenta Max lines. That is a you really great deal. It's a great deal. <clears throat> but he's missing calls for work. He's, he's done. I'm going to yeah. get him uh, two lines of Los Mobile, and we're going to call it a day. Yep. You know? Yeah, here's the... Here's the thing that when you're talking about the upgrades, like being commendable and stuff like that, I had to shake my head to that because to me, this is all on the surface. Because if you actually look at the areas that T Mobile's upgrading, they're doing like one of the three things. They'll either put the equipment on there and start broadcasting the wide channel 80 megahertz, makes it look great, but then you run a speed test and your ping is just god awful because the tower is not optimized, it's not angled properly. Or B, you run the speed test and you notice your speeds are literally zero different from when it was just band 66 band two because they didn't upgrade the backhaul or number three scenario that tower uh doesn't have like proper power or something to it so it's constantly just anytime there's a storm it just goes out for like three days and you just see maintenance <laughs> trucks from t-mobile or crown rural coming to fix it because t-mobile didn't want to put a backup power supply on it dennis i have seen every single scenario you just listed in the cle i have seen all of that and uh, I think it's a couple of things. Number one is they're doing the backup power, but it's going to be a process. It's going to take a couple of years before all these sites get backup power. So that's the first part, the generators. The second part is each network team is different. In my experience, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to get people fired. There's something wrong with the engineering here. These sites are so problematic Whatever Sprint had going on with these keep sites or these decoms or but the the site that the, the native T Mobile site by my house has always been awful. The, I'm not I'm not seeing what people are reporting to me. They're saying it's great and it has parity with AT and T Verizon. No. Mm -mm. Not in this market. No way. Not even really in Ohio. You know, I've I done a couple of tests outside there. the county. I've done a couple of tests outside the county, Dennis, where I've done some rural testing, and I have lost connection to T-Mobile for multiple miles, multiple times on a 50-mile trip. So that doesn't I, surprise me at all. It's all I'm saying is that the if you follow the T-Mobile Twitter accounts, Neville Ray, the marketing, the the onslaught. You would think, oh, my goodness, Verizon is done. <laughs> oh, my goodness, AT&T is a thing of the past. Here's T-Mobile, right? But they do have trouble, like Dennis is talking about, these things that he identified. That stuff is back end. That stuff is behind the scenes. That stuff needs attention because that's the stuff that makes people leave. The, open, the open signal reports don't make people come or go. And I just want to say real quick, I, I saw stats and smile, so I'll let you talk in a second because I know your experience is different now that you got N41 actually deployed proper. But when we were talking about these falls, about it taking years for T-Mobile to the upgrades, it's a totally different approach than what AT&T was doing was their one-touch policy. Whenever they got that first net deal, AT&T was going back on every cell site and literally ripping out antennas and putting the latest and greatest on there. Whereas you see T-Mobile make like four or five trips in a year to the same site to do one piece of the puzzle. They should just wait. Just do the permits. Wait. Do it all in one shot. It would save you man hours. And, yeah, have, my, I, my I experience to, has I been to, different. Let me tend to this real quick, Stetson. This is um, a statement here from Ryan. I know a few Sprint engineers. They are the best engineers I know. The Sprint network was, was good, actually, at the end. And the T-Mobile network here in the CLE was the problem. So, in my estimation, not the case here. And uh, I, I found I, I found some pretty messed up things out of the T-Mobile engineering side. So you're giving them props. I disagree. They do have their own issues in house. Don't don't blame Sprint engineers. If you can see that, Sneed, that's 5G. That's 5G. All right. Four by that, nine. No, but look at the look at the ping. Oh, one thirty. Wow, one thirty. Jitter eighteen. Hey, look Packet at the lost twenty percent. Twenty percent. That's my 5G experience with T-Mobile. Like, I would say 55% of the time. Well, that is, I think it's okay because they announced 5 gin and 5G beer. And so you can just, you know, get rid of your problems that way, right? That solves everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're a adult beverage distributor. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, my, my experience has been so different. Uh, we got N41 upgraded on 
maybe two or three sites here, and it's been amazing. Half of Logmon is covered. I'm getting 500 down in the grocery store when I'm wheeling my cart around shopping for groceries. Same location when I was uh, reviewing AT&T, it would drop service. And when I'm pulling out of my driveway here, I'm just in such a poor location for AT&T. I would say like, hey, I want to play uh, the SMT on Spotify, you know, stream that podcast or watch something on YouTube just to have background audio. And it wouldn't work. It wouldn't load. Uh, Google Maps would say it was offline. So totally inverse experience from you guys. But I'm just one tiny little town. So it really is like, to your credit, AT&T definitely is a better network. It just does depend. I think Magenta has its sweet spots. And if you happen to be in one of those, it can be fun. But otherwise, yeah. uh, AT&T is really where it's at right now. Basically, uh, the state of Arizona is a good <laughs> spot for T-Mobile. <laughs> the state of Arizona. I was actually talking to Pete, you know, the Bearded Dragon. He yeah. told me the same exact thing, Stetson. Yeah. He said the N71 has great reach in Colorado. He said the N41 has been phenomenal whenever they've installed it. And he said it's been dependable and great. And it's been I awesome. believe him. Yeah, and now that you're kind of echoing what he's saying, it just reinforces the regional nature of cellular networking. 100%. You know? 100%. Yeah. yeah. I wish okay. we were in the uh, CLE and we got Verizon's uh, millimeter wave sites going on. You guys got a little bit in Denver, but it's not really. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know if it's been weird. I tried doing a speed test uh, yesterday, and my S21 actually wasn't connecting. It would drop it within. I was within 20 feet of the cell site. Like I could go up and touch it. Like it was. Do you have an iPhone for that test? Yeah, yeah. Testing? iPhone was rock solid. Uh, I had an S20 Plus actually with me, and that was solid as well. It was just the S21 uh, having issues. You know, I didn't do too much testing. I was just like, well, that's weird. Commented on it. I don't like the S21 on. for millimeter wave. I don't. Yeah, has it, has it been overheating? What have, what have you heard from that? Not not very resilient signal. Uh, mm. Just doesn't seem to latch on, and it, it doesn't doesn't connect well and then stay connected. So. Sure. I wonder if that's a firmware thing. Maybe it's like a... Uh... Yeah, maybe. Uh, can they fix that, though? I'm still waiting on eSIM. Where's my eSIM? <laughs> no, that's also a firmware thing, right? Yeah, they, no, they they it is. <laughs> it literally is. It's already embedded in the device. All they have to do is turn it on. I mean, uh, not happening, bro. Not we we not. we had a uh, we had Airloo on yesterday. We were talking about like uh, eSIM supported the phones, and I I'm surprised Stetson didn't freak out when he was like, "Yeah, S20, S21." <laughs> do you remember that, Stetson? Yeah, that's that's international models do have it though. It's just the U.S. I'm pretty sure that me and Stetson had a heyday when the oh, S21 yeah. launched, and we we're like, "Oh, great, eSIM. When's it gonna get it?" Not. <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> okay hey uh oh go ahead oh no no go ahead dennis go ahead i was gonna ask did you want to talk about that one topic i texted you in the group chat uh which one the um light reading article the light reading article okay so that one was about the q2 Comcast report for Comcast. okay yeah, yeah. all right so here's <laughs> i'm not surprised man all right the the cable operators have one thing to their advantage they are, they've got people by the you know what for home internet, right? Mm -hmm. All they have to do is say, I'll save you a little bit of money on your wireless if you, we lock you in, right? Like we're going to, this is a retention play. When, when Altice and Charter and Comcast want to sell you wireless, they are saying, we want to grab onto you with more arms so that way you can't slip away. So we're going to deepen the relationship. And even though they're not making a lot of money on this, Dennis, mm -hmm. they are adding a ton of customers. Tell me about those numbers. Yeah, so um, so Comcast uh, for Xfinity Mobile added 280,000 mobile lines this quarter. That's up from 126,000 from last year, same period. Um, basically, they now have a total of 3.38 eight million mobile lines that's just comcast mm -hmm. and their overall revenue rose by 70.4 percent so xfinity mobile is a line of business is now generating 556 million dollars for comcast big time numbers they they do a nice job of convincing people to get service through them uh they're on the verizon wireless network right as an mvno kind of uh verizon doesn't mind I know a lot of people are like, oh, Verizon not adding customers. You need to count these people. They're on the Verizon network. Verizon doesn't have to directly service them. They just use X number of gigabytes of data on the network, and Verizon's like, cool, we're good with that. 
In yeah. fact, Verizon probably prefers it because a lot of Xfinity customers are probably running off of hot, like those Wi-Fi hotspots. So they're not uh-huh. even using the Verizon network. They're mostly on their home Wi-Fi, right? Because they know that they're on tiered data. So, so look at it like this, Dennis. If I can use one gig of data when I'm not home mm-hmm. for the month, mm-hmm. my bill is fourteen dollars for that line. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep, it's, it's fourteen bucks, and I'll always be on Wi-Fi. And maybe I go to a couple places that maybe have the the Comcast Wi-Fi hotspots. Oh, they're all over the place. Right. There's literally there's literally one right next to me because both my neighbors have Comcast. So it, it runs off their gateway. Like Lots their gateway has a secret broadcasting network <laughs> that like broadcasts it. So Exactly. So people are like, fourteen bucks, man. I was paying sixty dollars a line with Verizon. I'll do this. Well, even their unlimited got better. They actually introduced multi line uh pricing for the unlimited. So you can get like Stetson, what was it? Four lines for 120 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think it dropped to like uh thirty dollars a line. Yeah, so and it gets respectfully cheaper from there. But uh I want to comment about the retention play. I actually disagree with that a little bit, Sneed. I used to be of that mindset that this was all retention play. <clears throat> but looking at the numbers, I think this is Comcast's new growth metric because TV's dying, right? So they're trying to use mobile to make up for that revenue loss. But they don't make money on these lines. They're making money off them. They're making money. I mean, we just saw they're generating $556 million. Their, their revenue shot do you up. Know by what s- it, do you know what it costs them? I don't know what the cost is because you know they don't. No one ever discloses what their MVNO agreements are. I do. But it's not an MVNO. They what's have up? business. It's a business account. It's not an MVNO. Oh. That's an. It's expensive access. They're paying per gig. That makes sense. Why they have to buy the gig plans and stuff? Then they are paying per gig, and mm-hmm. and that's why it's. They tell. They've said that it's a retention play. That's the only reason why I'm saying it. It's not me trying to argue or anything, Dennis. They t- they have come out and said this is a retention play. So I'm not going to argue with what they're saying. And these don't get reported as MVNO prepaid through Verizon. Verizon's prepaid ads were 18000 Oh. That, so they're, that's not MVNO. That's, so they're li- that's okay. a business account. That's like Los Mobile, dude. <laughs> okay. It's well, literally Los Mobile. I didn't yeah. know it was. Uh, I didn't know it was like that. It is. It well, is. I, I mean, they have to be turning a profit to a certain extent. I mean, the cost I per. I hear the margins are very, very slim. When we say slim, we talking like twenty five percent, like eleven dollars. On on a what? Yeah. On the average account on wireless. Oh, is like eleven dollars. Like Interesting. Hmm. I I would almost see it as both. Track like, phones like seventeen bucks. I would see it as like. Uh, starting out retention, and I think they might be trying to boost profits by deploying more of their hotspots because uh, when customers are using their hotspot connection, they're not using the Verizon network, so uh, Comcast isn't paying for that access. So I think as customer data can be transitioned to be more and more on hotspot devices, that will help uh, decrease their costs and increase the profit margins by a little bit. Yeah, so and- it's, two, it's two things, that's and it's the hotspots, and then it's this also. They do have banned 48 licenses. They are going to deploy CBRS. They're That's another have... thing I was going to say. Look, I was going to say, like, I think it, I think Comcast probably started as retention, but I think they're converting because they're participating in a lot of spectrum auctions and the way it's forming with like permits and stuff like that. Of what I'm seeing, like that's being good on like going up on polls. I think they're going to try to kind of become their own little like mini MNO regional carrier and get as much traffic off the Verizon network to boost those profit margins, basically. Yeah, they, they, I mean, if they install a small cell and they can offload 1,000 gigs per day, you can run those numbers. You put it at a busy intersection, you take care of the gas station, the hotel, the apartment complex, right? Mm-hmm. That helps a lot. And see, the easy thing is, too, they already got the permits on the utility sure. pools. And when you talk about optic backhaul, and when you talked about the apartment complexes, they already got the uh, MDU contracts with a lot of apartment complexes where they're the exclusive providers. So I guarantee they can easily install a small cell on like a roof or something like that. No problem. <laughs> but I just wanted your I just wanted you to look at it because we talked about the cube reports for you know the big wireless players. But honestly, if we're talking about who's being the most interesting in wireless right now outside of AT&T, to me, it's the cable operators. No argument here. I totally agree. They, they, with predictable outcome, 
they add 500,000 subs every quarter. So <laughs> they're adding 2 million customers per year. Mm-hmm. Every year they've been in existence. This goes back three years because I think combined they're at 6 million subs now or very close. Yeah, I think, yeah, right. I think they're something like that, yeah. Okay, so a lot of people say that Sneed never admits when he's wrong. Sneed was wrong. I said that cable operators would never be able to properly sell wireless. I said it's not going to work. People don't want it. I was wrong. John Leisure was wrong. John Stanky was wrong. <laughs> Randall Stevenson was wrong. Pretty much everybody was wrong. I don't know anybody who thought that they were going to compete and do well. But, uh, you know, to them, they say it's a retention play. Maybe they could spin it so that they can actually be profitable with these more and more of these hotspots and the CBRS small cells. Because the CBRS small cells have huge capacity. If they do a combination of licensed and unlicensed, they could have 60, 80 megahertz channels. They're, those hotspots will do gigabit speed, mm-hmm. especially with their backhaul. Especially. And here's I mean, the I real... Think, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead here's the real talk question, though. I, I wanted to hear your opinion when we talked about this, but what do you think this means for DISH? You think they're going to be able to actually come in? I mean, if cable's eating up their market share, well, right? Dish is, Dish is national, and it's not a network of hotspots. They're going to be on AT&T. And their Greenfield 5G network is going to be unique and different than everybody else's. With How res- so? With respect that it's going to be open RAN, it's going to be the cheapest to operate, right, cost-effective for them. But they're going to be standalone at the jump. Right, you're gonna rip the box open and you're at standalone five G. So the latencies are gonna be unique. The IoT, the use cases, is gonna be dish. The partnership with AWS blows open doors for enterprise. That's something that not even Verizon's gonna rival. As much as I like what Verizon is doing in enterprise and what they're gonna do with their network as a service, mm-hmm. they're ahead of AT and T and they're ahead of T Mobile in that respect. But they still can't do what Dish is gonna do right off the bat. Because Dish doesn't have pre-existing infrastructure that needs to get upgraded. Everything's from scratch. It's the greenfield concept. These other operators are working on a brownfield operation, stuff that pre-existed that needs to be modified and upgraded. They have that one advantage. That's really their only advantage. They're at a disadvantage in coverage. They're at a disadvantage in spectrum licenses. They're at a disadvantage in money. Their advantage is they're starting from scratch. There's no playbook for 5G. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there, there's more than one way to win a Super Bowl. We've seen all types of teams do it. Dish gets to invent one of the ways to win the Super Bowl, you know? You I'm have a lot more faith. Them. You have a lot more faith in them than I do, just to I'll be honest. I'll tell you why I have faith. I'll tell you why and I've I've said this to the to the Patreon page too. When Dish became a wireless operator when the merger was successfully approved, Charlie Ergen bought a million shares of his own company. You think he's going to let them fail? He's <laughs> not. No, sir. He's I think I'll just ride them to the moon. I, I think I'll just leave it at that because people don't like that guy. But you have to watch what these people do. You don't have to listen to everything, but you have to see what they're doing. When a guy says, I'm buying a million shares today, he believes in himself. He believes in what they're going to be able to do. Plus, Dennis, you got to keep in mind, the FCC, the DOJ, they're force-feeding them opportunities to succeed. They want and need a fourth carrier. They're going to force the issue, right? They didn't have, they didn't have to go and search for a deal. T-Mobile was forced to give them one. Then they used it as a chip, a bargaining chip, to get AT&T to even beat it, to give them more years and a more uniform, larger network. That's how I look at it, you know? I agree. Yeah. I, I think with the AT and T agreement, it's almost like Dish can't fail right now. Like they have the partnerships they need to build something successful. Will they hit their timeline and their deadlines? I think that's still yet to be seen. But I think they're getting tremendous network access on AT and T, and there's huge upside potential for what they build starting from scratch with their greenfield approach. I think the AT and T thing was a good thing for Dish overall. I just. <laughs> I have a really hard time believing that they're going to be able to get like big enough, fast enough to actually make a meaningful presence in the market and start actually recouping some of the revenue that's needed to continue to invest into the network. I think that's the main problem. 
And I suppose they might be able to get investors to come in to generate that revenue and take on debt. But it's questionable. Like, part of me almost feels that Dish is going to just get good enough. Sort of like whenever, like, a startup company, you know, does their first, like, um, IPO. Mm-hmm. And they get acquired for their IP and intellectual property and stuff like that. I see Dish taking it so far and then going, like, a buyout play. Like, I feel like like someone like at and will just wait until there's, like, another um ajit pie in office who doesn't care about mergers and stuff like that and then just dish just gets gobbled up <laughs> like i don't know like they only have what nine million boost customers right probably fewer actually at this Eight point million maybe yeah i mean that's not a lot and these are and great and remember these aren't even like post-paid highly profitable customers like dish is not making a lot of revenue and as be we more saw profitable now how so the at t deal is cheaper true sure. but but you're forgetting about their whole uh, dish actual TV service, which is like floundering right now and losing the money. It's profitable, but they lost a lot of volume of customers. Yeah. I'm just worried about the money, and that's what it ultimately comes down to because you can't build a network off the 10, what was it, 10 billion he committed over five years? Seven. Seven years. That's even worse. Uh, <laughs> whereas, what was it, T-Mobile, T-Mobile's jumped up to what, 12 billion per year? Yeah, per year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and AT&T is what, $20 billion per year? They're going to be looking at $24 billion next year. And then Verizon's what, $20 billion as well? They'll probably be around 20 next year. Yeah. Okay. So well, actually more because they've got dedicated for C-Band. Actually, yeah. they're dedicating $10 billion to C-Band. And that's kind of, Dish says they want to do the whole national network. And that and that is kind of the point that I'm getting at, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. it just isn't going to happen. Well, Carlos has been looking at permits within Vegas. We all know that Las Vegas is going to be the first dish um, dish market. And uh, he's looking at, on average, $15,000 a tower site. They're, they're putting up functional gear. So it's uh, their low band, which is 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz. And then they have mid band in AWS. They have dedicated paired spectrum. Downlink, uplink. Then they have dedicated downlink and dedicated uplink. Their AWS spectrum is actually what gives them some gives them some mojo with AT and T, right? They're gonna allow for that spectrum sharing. There is one partner for AT and T that doesn't allow it, and that's Crown Castle. They don't allow spectrum sharing, so AT and T probably is working behind the scenes to modify and amend those contracts so that they can, because those would have been the sites that Dish would have had to build right away. And Crown Castle's like, hey, we got to get paid, dude. You know, do you want me to post, put this up? Yeah, I want you to share this real quick, though. But while Dish is working on all that, you got good old T Mobile or Metro by T Mobile running this. Yeah, the Ditch Boost, save half. Okay. So you got T Mobile who's playing bad and trying to to kill poor little Dish here. Um, and people are going to switch. They don't care. Like, they don't care. They're going to take that cheaper bill. I mean, you can get unlimited right now with uh, Metro for, what, 25 bucks with this half-off deal? And a free 5G phone. I mean, that's kind of the point I'm getting at. And then as far as AT&T goes, I think at and is doing great. I can't wait to take advantage of this extra spectrum uh, that Dish is going to share. And I think it's great that Dish is sharing the spectrum, and hopefully at and is paying them for it. Hopefully that makes up for a little bit of stuff. But, like... I'm just thinking by the time that Dish actually gets a usable network, their market share is going to shrink to the point where they might have maybe at best 4 million customers. The AT&T network is better than T-Mobile's, generally speaking, so that might keep somebody on boost because of the AT&T access, maybe. But if the networks are similar in an area, you're going to Metro. Yeah, but they're not going to know. They're not going to know it's on AT&T. People on Boost, you talk to some people on Boost, they still think it's owned by Sprint, if they even knew it all. Some people just think Boost is their own carrier. <laughs> like, well, they did They did advertise it at the Boost stores, you know, larger, better network now, right, when they got the T-Mobile network access because, you know, Sprint was quite regional in some ways, uh, honestly. Uh, they heavily relied upon, you know, partnership agreements and roaming. Um Dennis, everything you said is factually correct and warranted concern. You absolutely hit the nail on the head. If there was a checklist of 10 items about Dish, seven of them are unchecked. Three of them <laughs> are checked. I get it. Believe you me. And, and then there's just the name Charlie Ergen 
strikes a chord with people. Mm-hmm. They're just like, this guy's been squatting on Spectrum for a decade. You know, I mean, now he's would... got a build, though. So, I mean, at least we have the a structure in place where he can't just sit on it anymore. It has to be deployed. Whether I would just with have AT&T a... or their own. I would just have so much more faith if a backer like Am- like if Amazon decided the the choir dish would become like a major stakeholder where they have a like a say. I would have so much more faith in Dish's ability. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it for a second that, that network would be baller or Microsoft. If Microsoft came into play and was like, "Here we go, y'all. We're building this network and we're building it right and we'll use um Azure as our back end." Like I wouldn't AT&T doubt it for is. what a- AT&T's using Azure? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, fun fact I didn't know, but <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I wouldn't like I wouldn't doubt it for a second. But like like Dish, Dish is like that one really rich kid that was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, and he still ends up like homeless. Like he's are got. Are you all... talking about? Are you talking about the kid with the 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 Freedom Phone? Or are we talking about that guy? I was listening to the podcast the other day. You guys were talking about the Freedom Phone. That's what that reminded me of. Yeah. Okay yeah. <laughs> that that was another example, but no, I was thinking more of like just someone that somehow got into some place in life, even though they didn't like have any of the skills. Like mm-hmm. they're just like that rich kid, like yeah, you know, the rich kid born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but is literally like, like they only exist because they lived off a of daddy's money type of deal. That's how I kind of see Dish. They only exist right now because everybody's like helping them out. I mean, they made some smart acquisitions with Ting. Like, I'm looking forward to that back end sure. door system. I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I'm glad AT and T's being their uh, teacher, as you use the analogy of. But like, at some point, I need to see Dish make actual meaningful progress in a very quick amount of time. Because if a year or two goes by and they manage to meet the milestone of getting 70% of people covered or whatever it was. And all they do is cover New York or something. <laughs> then, then I don't care because one, New York was already a highly competitive market. So there's no way it even matters. Um, yeah, but that was, so their FCC requirements are as follows, right? So they have to hit those or else they're taking a fine, you know, as long as they're not meeting those requirements. So however many days they don't have that, that checkpoint, Mm-hmm. They're they're getting smacked with millions of dollars in fines, and I don't think he wants to eat up those fines. I think he'd rather be profitable. So, but here's the thing, Dennis. The last I checked, eighty percent of the United States the United States population lives in cities, like urban cities. So we're talking like urban suburban. Mm-hmm. The Royal American population density is low, so the top fifty PEAs. He probably hits seventy percent. You know, so it's not going to be hard for him to hit that metric. The harder metric is going to be the five G metric by twenty twenty five. What is that metric, by the way? Seventy percent with five G, mm. as opposed, bro, the seventy percent covered. They could just give all the AWS to AT and T, and you have seventy percent of the p- uh, population instantly, <laughs> right? They already have the the gear up on these sites. So they're going to have that. That's no problem. Uh, even with, I think, T-Mobile, they would have had that. If they said to T-Mobile, take our AWS, you know, they probably would have had 70%. So um, we'll see, man. Good points. But I'm all right, I'll, I'll, let the, I'll let the topic die. I know you had some good ones. You go, man. <laughs> We're going to do a game. All right, this is the first game. This one is called Buy, Hold, or Sell. This is kind of like stock markets. Remember how they talk about shares? Like, mm-hmm. okay, is 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 a is a stock a buy, a hold, or a sell? We're gonna start with the first one. I'm gonna start with Dennis. AT and T, buy. Are they a buy, a hold, or a sell? Buy. All right, now you got to tell me why. Because they're right now AT and T stock has been kind of going down. Like I think it's lowballed basically. Um, AT&T has huge potential with growth, especially since they just recently spinned off like their entertainment and they're refocusing back on networking. So you got their AT&T U-verse, which the fire they've been expanding. And for anybody that doesn't know, home-based internet is highly profitable, something like 84% profit margin. And here's the real kicker. at and is not even the one that's actually spending the real money to expand their network. It's coming from the government's FCC broadband fund. So we, the tax... It, yeah. Right. We, the taxpayers, are paying a good chunk of that to expand the <laughs> network, and at and is just going to milk that profit for years to come. Their wireless network is super strong and well-positioned, and they're continually 
getting contracts awarded from the government. FirstNet was a huge one, but there has been plenty of Department of Defense contracts that have been coming in, which is just extra government money on the cake. A uh, huge refocus on business as well in the commercial sector as well as Internet of Things. So this is just all adding up to like long-term revenue growth and their churn is at like record lows compared to others in the industry. So Dennis like literally did the, the he was literally looking at the investor shares stock analysis. That wasn't even my attention. I was just thinking about the upside of the direction of the company, wireless fiber, how you view the company as a provider and like consumer notoriety. So, like, you actually did, like, the whole shebang. That was well, impressive. I mean, just to, just to <laughs> clarify, Sneed, I don't know if you know this, but I I, uh, I invest in stocks quite a bit. Uh, I, hold on, I hold on to AT&T for their dividends. Same thing with Verizon, dividend stock. So, Don't tell anybody, bro, but uh, if, if I was going to predict the, the real value of AT&T, I think it's a $70 or an $80 stock. They just have to convince people that the debt's going to get taken care of. And oh, it's, it's going to get taken care of. Then it, it's over. As yeah. soon as that happens... That that stock price has so much potential, and actually, you know what I'd like to see them do, Dennis? I'd like to see them do some share buybacks, and I would like to see them cut the dividend. No, I don't like share buybacks. If a company does it, it makes me really frustrated because it temporarily, in the short term, yeah, it inflates the stock price, which is good for us, the shareholders. But it's much better when the company takes that money that they're going to spend and actually re-puts it back into the business. Well, they Stop. can do that because, actually, if you think about it, the dividend is a heavy tax burden. The share buybacks won't incur the same taxes. So I'm actually more with that because that helps their bottom line. I mean, think about the interest on that debt. It's pretty fierce, dude. They're at like $170 billion. Fair. They just shaved off about $40 billion, right, with the spinoff with Discovery. That helps. So now they're probably down to like one thirty. 140 they did get some c-band that hurts right so there is some things that they could do but yeah uh, but spinning off media was good but the longer the debt goes by it artificially gets lower anyway just due to inflation like it's like one of those well, things they can re they could probably refine now and get next to nothing on that dude think and that's the it. point like inflation <laughs> will basically make the debt go lower than it actually is so i'm not that worried about the debt and also um, the reason why I hold on at and stock is not because I think it's going to be something I can flip for money. I'm holding on to it fit for the very reason of the dividend. It's good to have – basically, I'm trying to have a stockpile of dividend stock so that at some point when I retire, instead of me like selling my stakes and stuff like that, I'm just getting a paycheck from the government. And then also, that way, I'm avoiding capital gains tax. Facts. Finance 101. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's good. I do the same thing for my daughter. I do the same exact thing. I want Yasmin, by the time she graduates high school, to have a very diverse portfolio. So that way, when she starts making her own money, she can give it back to her dad. Because I'm <laughs> old, gray, or bald, or both. I don't know. Gray and bald. I have hey, no idea. Sneed, did you buy the GameStop stock whenever it was a meme? No. No. I'm not going to lie. I got in on that. I, I got total... in on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made a total of like AMC. Did you get out on that too? <laughs> yeah, I made like thirty dollars profit on GameStop, ten dollars a share. But AMC, I actually did really good because I I kept on it, forgot about it, and I bought it at like eleven bucks. It was like fifty dollars when I sold some of it. So I actually made two hundred and fifty bucks off the AMC stock. Well done, man. <laughs> All right, so we got a buy for Dennis Stetson. Where are you I'm at going, with AT and T? I'm going hold with this. So I'm working on my AT and T review right now, and my impressions are that as we've talked about. Their network is outstanding. I would say it's probably number one or number two. I slot it in the number two spot because I think Verizon's winning a little bit on coverage. Um, and I think T-Mobile has a better value if you happen to get good T-Mobile coverage. But AT&T, easily number two, and it's going to be number one for people who get good AT&T coverage. But my experience with all other aspects of the service, account management, customer service and support, just trying to sign up. Sneed, they canceled my order. I'm trying to give AT&T hundreds of dollars per month. <laughs> Four-line account. They just canceled. Called into a rep. Is, is there any way to just like uncancel the order, have those SIM cards shipped out? Nope, they can't do it. And wow. I would go hold. I think their network is great. It's probably going to increase. The dividend's amazing. I don't see their stock tanking. I don't really see it skyrocketing either, to be honest. Uh, but my experience was so poor that I think... Um, I don't know how they're getting customers is kind of my bottom line here. Like it, it was just such a poor experience for me. You got to go in store. You got to do all these things. So I don't know. I, I think hold. I wasn't amazed by uh, the experience I had 
on the back end. Stream Saver was broken for me. Could oh. never turn it off. Yeah. yeah. So I did I follow know. that on Twitter, Stetson. I did. Yeah, follow that I, I apologize. I, I tweeted that out quite a few <laughs> times. It was really frustrating for me. So oh, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would I would go hold. Like they're not going anywhere. You're gonna get a good dividend, and uh, I'm just I don't know. Okay, that's, so that's where I'm at. I I'm going with upside. I think they have the best assets in the industry. Nobody can mess with AT and T. They're a buy all day, all day. Wow, wow, um, two buys, two buys, one hold. <laughs> but I love your hold actually. I absolutely love it. That's a different perspective. The things you said are the reasons why people customers will flee. They go somewhere else. It's yeah. true. All right, let's go to T-Mobile. Buy, hold, or sell, Stetson. Oh, man, this is such a good one. So T-Mobile, I think before the 5G era, before the C-band auction, they were definitely a buy in my mind. I thought because they had the Sprint acquisition and they could deploy their mid-band 5G, the N41, so much quicker than everyone else, I thought they had a, a bigger upside. And I think what is concerning right now is what's looming on the horizon. What's going to happen to the AT&T network? What's going to happen to the Verizon network when C-band is deployed? Uh, and will T-Mobile's lead vanish or will they continue to hold that? I think right now for T-Mobile, I'd probably, I'd probably go hold for me personally. I think I'm not sure how much their upside is. I think they gained a lot and their stock did really well these past 6, 12 months because of C-Band and, excuse me, because of N41 and what they've deployed. Um, but I'm not sure how much more upside there is to that uh, industry. Um, so I would, I'd probably go hold or, I mean, I think T-Mobile Home Internet was a good play, but it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going hold on them too, I think. Okay. Dennis. I have mixed feelings because if you look at the industry of the whole of telecom, generally speaking, their stocks don't typically go that high. And right now, T-Mobile as a stock sitting price is pretty high. And there's one of two outcomes that happens. Three outcomes. I think either A, the stock splits so that T-Mobile can try to generate more money for future investments. B, the stock goes up a little bit more because T-Mobile Home Internet is a great line of revenue. As I talked about, Internet's highly profitable. And that does really well if they get their network right. But C, and this is the more likely scenario that I picture happening for T-Mobile, is that Dish drops. I think it's artificially raised. I think once Dish gets, if Dish can be competitive or as AT&T continues to just steal market share and Verizon decides to get their game face on, T-Mobile is going to be in a rough spot. And the whimsical wonders of T-Mobile's 5G marketing just don't play out for investors. So for me, I would probably sell half of my stocks if I had any with T-Mobile and invest into something else okay so you're a sell yep okay i i'm a buy you think it's worth I, buying I think, at 144 dollars a share i think t-mobile is going to end up around 160. i respect I think, that i think they're going up around 159 bucks 158 bucks as a low end i think they could possibly end up at 170. all they have to do is show that they can still grow and the money will keep coming in. Uh, they've already shown that they can grow. So yeah. the T-Mobile home internet is one thing. They stopped doing free lines. That ended. Yeah, I was kind of no concerned about that. They're no longer doing free lines. So yeah. that means if they're going to grow now, it's legitimate profitable growth. From a business standpoint, it's foolish. But they feel like they have to do it for retention, right, to get people in. Okay, well, I got these free lines. I can't match this plan with any other carrier. I've got eight lines. Five are paid and three are free. And my bill is $198. You can't match it. Yeah, you so can't good. do it. You can't, I would say even with a 50% off Verizon, you can't do it. I would say their business uh, plans are doing really well, too, because they just relaunched uh, T-Mobile business lines. So, and I think Snead, they, they've had so great Snead, promos where's the that. growth, though? Where's the growth coming? Like, outside, like they the only area be, I see. They, the only... they want to be at 500,000 T-Mobile home internet customers by the end of the year. They want to be at five million by 2025. That'd be good. Those are good metrics. If they hit those metrics, that's good because that's fifty to sixty dollars an account. That's just. That's remember they treat T-Mobile Home Internet as surplus capac uh, capacity on the network. Verizon is spending money to create surplus capacity. T-Mobile is not. They're they're creating the mobility network and they're taking excess, and they're basically hawking it off at like a pawn shop for 50 bucks a month 60 bucks a month 
And by the way, it's bottom tier priority. They got you bottom of the totem pole. Simple choice. T-Mobile One, Magenta, Essentials is all ahead on priority over T-Mobile Home Internet. To show you bottom barrel priority. Yeah, but the markets where T-Mobile is going to do well with home internet are rural markets, which are also the areas where T-Mobile's network is the weakest. Well, they're going to try to get some growth in rural, too. They're building tower sites rural, and then they're building retail. So they're going to get some growth there, too. And those customers are dying to leave Verizon. 100%. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I think Snead, you bring some good points. I think I would see T-Mobile, we didn't see it this past quarter, but I think people, once they realize T-Mobile is good with the free trial, uh, the network improves in their area. I could see them churning from Verizon or AT&T to T-Mobile for the lower price and for some of the added extra features and benefits. You don't see a second round of ARPU going down, though, per, per subscriber for T-Mobile? Well, I got issue. ARPU going up. Oh, you think? Okay. I got ARPU. I got ARPA. Team, that's the new metric that really matters. It's the average revenue per account. They oh. don't care how they get it. If they can sell you on Magenta Max and T-Mobile Home Internet... They just boosted the floor on that account, right? You literally just created what was a $150 account, just became a $200 account just by going to Magenta Max. And if you sold them T-Mobile Home Internet, now it's $250. You see what I'm saying? That's how they're looking at it. So if they convert, especially rural. Bro, here's something I know about rural America. You give them what they're paying for, they will stay with you forever. They are going nowhere. You know, they're not flaky. <laughs> we're flakes in the city. We got options, bro. Yeah. We find the next pretty girl. We're on to the next one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like if another home internet provider comes and says, I'll give you the gigabit speed, but I'm going to save you 20%. You're gone. As long as it's comparable, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Sneed, I like that. I like that. I would I would consider swaying mine to a, a buy as well in that case. I'll sway but, mine to a hold. Remember, that's execution, though. Right? They must. You must have faith in Eugene. I don't you know? have faith See, in that's T-Mobile. the thing. <laughs> if it was John I, Leisure, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, it's a buy all day. I'll go to hold, but I don't have faith. I don't have faith in T-Mobile executing on it properly. That's the thing. Yeah, I think, I, right. I think they're a fun player. Yeah, I do too. All right, let's start with Dennis. Verizon, buy, hold, or sell. Man, ah. Uh, Verizon's an interesting one because they haven't been doing much with files. They sold off a lot of their footprint, but if I understand correctly, they're actually looking at re-expanding Fios's footprint now whenever they're doing these millimeter wave expansions with their, with their one-touch policy. And if that's the case, that's exciting because anywhere Fios is at, they're getting customers. I guarantee you people will leave Comcast in a heartbeat for some fiber. Sure. So that is a growth aspect. The wireless home internet product from Fios is, or excuse me, from Verizon as well, I would argue is better than what T-Mobile is currently doing at the moment from a liability standpoint. And Verizon already does have coverage in rural America, so that's the growth opportunity there. And then lastly, Verizon is the king of improving revenue per subscriber. These these upsells from these older plans and these more expensive unlimited plans, man. they are the kings of nickel and diming you. <laughs> and because of that, I am a hesitant buy. Okay. All right, so that's a soft buy. We'll call soft it. buy. <laughs> that uh Stetson, let's go to you, man. I'm a loud buy. I think oh. Verizon <laughs> is building the best 5G network. I think their millimeter wave has been tremendous. It's the most widespread uh, spread and most deployed of any network that I've seen so far. You can actually tell where it is on their coverage map. They've got their plans aren't great, but it's clear people are paying for them. They've got some of the most subscribers in the industry, and I think they're just going to go next level once they're able to deploy C-band and make that a part of their layer cake. And I think it's going to taste really, really good. I'm a buy all day on Verizon. I think they've got the experience, the back end, the system. They've got the spectrum. They're they're creating the 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 top experience, and uh, that's why I'm a buy all day for them. I am a hold on Verizon. The reason I'm a hold on Verizon is <clears throat> I think at some point they will have based on the way that they're trending. 
they are probably going to have consecutive quarter losses at some point very soon. The premium upsell in today's economic climate is not a good look. They ran a huge 5G phone promotion and only added 180,000 subs. That's concerning because AT&T ran that promo and got almost 800,000. That's the difference between one company that will take your business as it is and the other one that wants you on a premium upsell. It's literally a four-fold difference. AT&T is viewed as a growth company right now on wireless. Verizon has a net loss for the year. They lost over 200,000 subs in quarter one. They gained 187,000 this quarter. That's a net loss. True. For six months, that's a net loss. True. I'm a hold. They need to start considering growth or else those 130 million postpaid subs within the next couple of years will turn into 128 million postpaid subs. Meanwhile, T-Mobile is still adding 5 million a year. And AT&T looks to be adding about 3 to 4 million a year. Yeah, but see, so, I have a hot take for you, though. Okay. Verizon's got a game that the others don't, and it has to do with all these prepaid plays that this got going on right now, okay? They got their visible flanker brand, which is going to help fill that need for growth ads. I know it's not post-paid sales, but you get the, the customer that's more price conscientious. They got the uh, track phone acquisition um, to bolster their prepaid segment even further. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, they got the deals with the cable companies. So they're getting money from different angles. Even if they lose a postpaid sub, it's not necessarily saying that Verizon customers that's, and go. That's the only reason why I'm a hold. If they didn't have that, they're a sell. Hmm. If they didn't have that, they're a 100% a sell. They're they're expensive, but they're good. But AT and T's like, hey, we're like right here with you guys in coverage and performance, and in some ways better, and we're about 10% cheaper. And we're willing to bundle with wireless and, and wireline and fiber and give people 25% off. Yeah, so but Fios is doing player. the same thing. For, uh, Verizon, that's true. That's I, true. They're true. doing the same yeah. thing now. So Yeah, that's true. They, they do respond a little bit, but they're the last to respond. You can't grow being the last. Well, I'll just say this, too. They actually raised prices on Fios, so they're going to be generating even more revenue from their Fios segment. I mean, what are they at right now? I, the last I checked, they were at like 60 and 80 for their... Top they're at plans. with auto pay and paperless billing. They're at eighty five for gig. Without okay. auto pay and paperless billing, ninety five. Okay. So. So they did uh, raise pricing. Yeah, and then they wow. raised their TV fees as well by like a good twenty dollars. But, you, uh, but what I'm what I'm more so going for here is like, even if their numbers aren't growing, the revenue is still growing. Like they. They can still nickel and dime people, even even though AT and T is competitive. And you know I'm raw raw AT and T. Like I love AT and T. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I yeah. I just feel like Verizon has that ability to be the Apple. And I think I think the reason why they're hesitant to reduce costs is because once they do that, you can't really go back on that. Right? If you throw out a Vizwa on the waters to get your low cost consumer, it's fine. You're not tarnishing the Verizon premium brand. And maybe. Maybe the growth aspect for the company isn't going to be Verizon. Maybe it's some type of spinoff like Straight Talk by Verizon or whatever company they decide to acquire, kind of like how AT&T is doing AT&T by Cricket or Metro by, or T -Mobile, Metro by T Mobile, you know? Sure. Yeah, I got it. I agree. Um, we'll have to see. I, I, f I feel like Verizon's a hold because here's one of the things that, you know, I was kind of mentioning. Zeke mentions the same thing Verizon upsells and price increase sustainable. Not when the rest of the market is not doing that. If you're the only one premium upsell, you're kind of in bad company. You're by yourself. The other two carriers are more competitive. Yeah, but if you look at the cell phone industry, Apple was always the one that raised prices and the rest of the industry followed. You think about it, right? Like Apple's the first to come out with a $1,000 iPhone, right? Then the rest of the industry followed. The Note did nine forty nine plus taxes. It was $1,000. The Note 9. The Note Nine. Well, was no. that when the iPhone X was out? No, that was after the iPhone X came out. Yeah, that was no, after. It was the... right. It was right before the iPhone X. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, but that memory... was it. Was the direction that things were going in? We had phones for eight ninety nine. It was like, okay, well, what's the next step? A thousand. You know? Well, I guess what I'm getting at here is, is like, 
if anything, I see T-Mobile and AT&T being less competitive as growth. Just, it's a saturated market, right? Like growth can only come in other like in certain ways and like adding handset cell phones, that's kind of dead. Like growth for all these companies is going to have to come in the form of internet of things with business customers because that's where the real money's at. The home internet that we talked about because there's no competition in that space and maybe the possibility of entertainment with some spinoffs like what AT&T did or with what Verizon does, because I think Verizon has major stakes in uh, Hulu, right? Well, they're in they're in partnerships with them. Do they have a stake in the company though? I don't think so. Oh, they just have a partnership. Disney, Disney, Disney. Right? Don't they? They have the partnerships with Disney and stuff. Yeah. Good stuff, Dennis. Awesome angles, um, Stetson. You feel good about your buy. Hold sells. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I feel pretty good. I'm I'm buying Verizon. Um, I think I'd buy T-Mobile as well. Okay. Holding on AT and T, I feel good about that. I mean, if I was a millionaire, I would just buy all of them and just let it ride. <laughs> but <laughs> dude, I think that's a mistake. I would buy like buy Mint or like buy US Mobile or like Mint's not public, make... are they? No, no. But yeah, you know, Ryan trying. bought he bought a majority stake of them or whatever. You know, I would I would buy one of those. I think that's where the huge growth potential is. I don't know. I like what they're doing. You guys ready for game number two? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do it. This one's more fun. Okay. This one is even simpler. <clears throat> so the last one was three options. We're going to make it two options. Real or cap? Meaning like truth or f- true or false. All right. Okay. We're going to do because okay. the kids are using the word cap now. All right. Oh, okay. that's news so, to me. So real or cap? You know what I'm talking, Dennis. You know. Actually, I must be old because I didn't get it either. <laughs> All right, so that's what the kids are saying now. That's yeah, cap. Was, that means somebody's like lying. Cap. Okay. No, no. Cap is when somebody's lying. Okay. Right. So <laughs> he, real he's or cap? He's got hands-on experience being a teacher. I'm out <laughs> right? of it. This is wow. All right. I'm going to just – I have like a dozen statements. Here we go. You All guys right. respond. Real or cap? And if you want to ex- explain anything on it, you can go ahead and do that. Statement number one. Prepaid is for people with bad credit. Real or cap? Real. I'm going cap. <laughs> I'm going cap too. All right. So, what's your reason, Stetson? I think it's marketed for people who don't want to have uh, run their credit check for postpaid. I think it's for people who are frugal and looking to save money on an affordable plan. I I took I thought of it in a different approach. I was thinking the reason prepaid exists is because not everybody can qualify for postpaid, and that was my rationale. It just so happens that there are people out there that want to be frugal and also save money. But I thought I thought the same thing as that's and there are some people that just don't want to run their credit, you know, for their cellular service or they want they want to know exactly what the bill is going to be. Right. Like I got sixty dollars, bro. Take it or leave it. You Dude, know? <laughs> I, I have better experiences. I'm telling you with a prepaid service like I pay for the service. I get the service and the service expires. I feel yeah. like with these postpaid carriers, I honestly AT&T you're going to get a bill, bill two months later and stuff. Yeah. It's like yeah. Uh, it comes in. I'm like, I don't even understand where this is coming from. So. Mm-hmm. OK, good. You, I, I'm, we're going to go with some pace to this because we're already an hour and a half. Minutes. Yeah. yeah. Let's All go, right. Let's go. <laughs> State number two. Prepaid isn't a good option. For multi-line accounts or family accounts. Cap. Yeah, that's a cap. Yeah, I agree. That is a total cap. We've got some options now. Go ahead, Stetson. Visible, US Mobile, Mint Family. You've got options. You can get Cricket. a great plan. Cricket, yeah. Metro. It's it's they have the twenty five dollar unlimited plans. Maybe it's deprioritized. I think a lot of people that's gonna be okay. For me it's okay. And it's a heck of a great value. Okay. Visible wireless is the best value in prepaid. Cap, Cap. or real? Cap. Performance. That was fast. The, the customer service is terrible, and <laughs> the performance just isn't there. It's cap, true. hard cap. <laughs> Can I get a cap emoji? Put a baseball cap in the live chat, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to go cap, too. I, I thought about this. I mean, you can get it for 5 bucks a month, and that is like... It's incredible. Such a good value. I think ultimately, though, when you factor in the overall experience, I would probably go like it can be a toss up visible or US mobile. Uh, And I really like also, um, you know, we talked about Xfinity mobile before. And I think if you're looking for a budget option, that can be great as well. I still think pound for pound 
it gives you the most for the twenty five bucks. It does. It does. That's that's yeah. what really made me at forty pause bucks. It's a different proposition. Yeah. No. Forget forty. But at <clears> twenty five <throat> bucks, taxes and fees included, yeah. and it's it's basically guaranteed. Like you can join my party and the Reddit party. That's a tough one, Sneed. That's if, a tough if, one. If price is number one priority, slam dunk visible. Yeah. If customer care matters, if structure, and kind of like what Dennis is saying matters, all those things kind of change the dynamic. So yeah. well, they also have eSIM and they just added support for the Apple Watch. Like they're doing stuff. It's they are like doing stuff. But the word value, like it's not just about cost. It's pound for pound what you're getting. Yeah. And I hundred percent this. I hundred percent believe in capping that visible is not the best value option. <laughs> cap. Okay, this is great. All right, next one. Metro by T Mobile is the best value in prepaid, real or cap? <laughs> I, I think, think go they cap. I think it can be if we add the caveat of multi line. Twenty five bucks a month right now, dude. And a five G phone. Is I think that's almost pretty vicious. Good. I think it's real, but only if we had the caveat that you do multi-line. I would say true with their current promo. I would say true with the current promo. I think before, promo. I would almost give it to like uh, Cricket had a really good plan, 33 bucks a month for four lines. Um, I do like the Amazon Prime, that plan that has it, the Google One storage. Yeah. You know, I'll go true. Nice. I'll go true. I think, I think family plan, T-Mobile network, I think that's the best value right now. You guys like the way I did this because these are tough, dude. These yeah. are tough, you, you, Yeah. You get one choice or the other. I don't want you guys with the back up against the fence, man. You know, you're going to have to make a decision. All right, next one. Let's go network with this one. Cap or real? Or real or cap? Millimeter wave is useless and pointless. Cap. For cellular and mobility. Cap. Yeah, I'm going cap on that. I'm going it has its place. It right. has its place. I truly believe that millimeter wave will keep mid-band clear of congestion. It will be the savior for mid-band, like Batman and Robin. You pick which one is Batman and Robin. I'm just saying it can keep mid-band clear of congestion. I don't know. I don't know about all that because demand will increase with time. And I'm sure we'll reach a point where mid-band gets, does get congested. Um, but I know it's really important to have millimeter wave, especially in like stadiums and stuff. So yeah. definitely a cap. It's important. Stetson, you said cap also. Yeah, I love millimeter wave. I think it's I think it's great. I mean, I think the home internet products will be really good, and I think for wireless, it's going to open up new opportunities for uh, unrealized wireless. potential, like virtual nice. reality and gaming, streaming different content on the go. Yeah, I think it's I think it's huge. Yeah, I love the concept of fixed wireless too. There's going to be people that are going to have a new option. If they only had one, now they'll have two or three, you know, because of T-Mobile, Home Internet, and Verizon. Okay. Next one. Real or cap? Verizon needs to drop prices and add value to their services. Real. Cap. <laughs> okay. I'm saying real. Verizon has to respond. The industry is changing around them. It is getting more competitive, and they're lagging behind. Go ahead, Stetson. I think I think they're okay because I think their MVNOs can really hold. Like, if you're looking for a value plan, that's where you look at Visible. That's where you look at US Mobile. I'm sure something will manifest with their acquisition of TrackPhone. Uh, I think Verizon, as it stands, like, yeah, I want them to improve. I don't think they need to. I, you know, they still have the most subs, and I think the device promos are going to keep people on their network. It's a got good coverage uh and i don't know like as much as i want them to do better i think their prepaid segment and the verizon mvnos and i think they can hold their own and carry customers who need that budget verizon option ahead, so i said real because the investments that they're making are going to be pointless if the subscribers can't utilize it like the yeah. fact that verizon starter doesn't isn't able to take advantage of millimeter wave and stuff like that is just stupid and inefficient use of the network and the available capacity that's there and I just think that's not smart from a business decision standpoint. So they're going to have to at least the very least improve their plans and allow for 1080p streaming at the very least on their premium plans at the very least. I think when you look at the statement, it said Verizon needs to drop prices and add value to services, at least add value to the services, at yeah. least if you're going to maintain the pricing. Okay, next one. Real or cap? AT&T is the new one carrier. Real, I would actually say real on this too. Yeah, I'm going with I'm going with real. 
I think it was their their device promo that they offered for both new customers and more importantly existing customers uh, was a surprising uncarrier move from AT and T. It was effective. It's working. It continues to work. We're likely going to see it this fall. Listen, I've had stories on the channel where I complained about AT and T, but AT and T is also the only carrier that gave me like three months worth of credits before, and I'm talking like two hundred dollar credits a month. Each of the full account, right? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Wow. There that's pretty freaking uncarrier. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of their uncarrierness is also the so Stetson brought up the upgrade for all existing customers and new. I also think that when they upgraded the elite plan in their terms, there was no price increase. Magenta Max came with a price increase. I actually Go stayed the same. No. No, Magenta Max had an increase. Magenta Stetson. Max is more expensive than Magenta Plus. Really? Yeah, yeah. Magenta Plus was 80. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you like to do a video on that, Stetson? <laughs> Stetson. I think you should. I know you missed the boat, but I think you should do it. <laughs> yeah, Magenta Plus was 80, and then before Magenta Plus, OnePlus was 75 bucks. So every time T-Mobile's done a, a plan refresh, it's come with a price increase. Is that on Carrier, sir? I want to hold off on comments. <laughs> I, I honestly have 90% confidence that Magenta Plus was $85. So how many? So how many lines? What wasn't it? Four lines was one sixty. Uh, I know the single line pricing was the same, and I think what may have happened is T-Mobile was running a third line free promo, and maybe yeah. that promo expired. I don't and think they're doing caused... free lines with Magenta Max. That's in. I they have done them in the past, but if you have any plans predating, what is it? Uh, two thousand eighteen. Any lines, they don't give you the, those free lines on Magenta Max. Oh, trust me. I learned that one, Steve. Ah, uh, yeah. See, I. <laughs> Whenever they switched me, either. That's when they switched me over to Essentials without my permission, of course, the plan I wanted. Did I, Did you not listen? Were you not there for that live stream? Wait, you got. You were pushed onto Essentials? Yeah. I went into the store to take advantage of a free line deal. Um, and I just wanted to add on a free line for OnePlus. When I called in, the guy. Said like just give me a moment to do it because I like they couldn't do it in store. I had to call in. They put me on essentials, and then oh he just hung god. up, and it became this whole story. <laughs> oh my god! So you lost the T-Mobile one, right? And then oh. it became this whole story. Long story short, and someone from our audience that was incredible reached out to me and basically gave me the real breakdown. And ultimately, I decided to go to Magenta Plus and just cut my losses because even when I was back on the One Plus plan, I lost like my ten dollar kickback discount. I was just like F it at this point. Uh, plus one plus with three lines of it being more expensive anyway than it was wow. supposed to be. Okay, so. nice. Uh, they're saying the Magenta Max is ninety bucks, so with auto pay, it's eighty five. I'm I'm still I still right. have ninety percent confidence that was the same as what Magenta Plus was. It was well, not that's what they said. But when I talked to customer care at a, at T-Mobile, they said it was more expensive than the. Plus. It was not because Magenta was seventy. And then Magenta Plus was eighty. That was the break. That's the pricing I remember. I I remember it being eighty five. So okay, we'll have to. We're check we're in agreement to disagree for the time being until <laughs> someone can load up the Wayback Machine and get clarification on that. Okay, I'm doing that right now as we talk. But a, na, ask your next question. All right, real or cap? T-Mobile is still the uncarrier. Cap. Oh man, Sneed. <laughs> You it, look, man. It's the double whammy. I hit you with the AT and T. I had to hit you with the T Mobile. I mean, can can T Mobile be an uncarrier if AT and T has already decided to be the new uncarrier? They absolutely. There could. can only be one uncarrier. I I'm going I'm going true. I think T Mobile is still an uncarrier. Disagree wholeheartedly, though. That's okay. Everything everything T Mobile is doing has been the most carrier that they could possibly be. <laughs> They're, I mean, they're more carrier than they've ever been. That's I mean, they're, they're literally focusing on revenue growth, which is nothing new. They're taking, they're stripping away perks. I mean, look at T-Mobile Tuesday and how garbage it is now. All it is is coupons. <laughs> they're um, not doing chicken sandwiches anymore. Um, their customer service. I know, Steve, you had a comment about how it got better for you because your team home internet experience. But in my personal opinion, their customer service has gotten significantly worse wow. um, compared to what I remember it being. I mean, they had that whole layoff of like a bunch of people for. Um, was it the phone or T-Mobile chat? Which... Team experts, T-Force. Yeah, they did a big layoff on their customer service rep stateside and pushed that over international seas. There's no way that's a good experience. I mean, I'm not – listen, 
I'm not saying that like international workers can't do a bang up job, but like, what is it that I want to go for here? Sometimes part of customer service is building rapport and a connection with the agent that they actually give a crap about you and, you know, have that emotional empathy that they can care. And my general interactions when I talk to like these third party call centers that are probably taking like they probably take one call from T-Mobile and the next calls from AT&T, these third party call centers wow. is that they just don't care. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, like they tell you they're going to call you back and they don't. Everything requires a ticket. Like it used to be like I remember when I, I remember with my tower back in my hometown, I'm not going to say the name. I used to know the local engineer. So when there was problems, I could literally just like. Be like, yo, please report to this guy. He's the local engineer for my area. Like, this is the issue. This tower got struck by light or whatever the thing happened that got wrong with it, right? Like, that's how, like, um, uncarrier Team O was. It was almost like they were a small niche family where I knew, yeah. like, the Team O engineers in the area. It is not like that anymore. They're a much bigger company. I think it's harder to be the uncarrier when you're serving twice as many customers as you were in your peak, you know, as the regular Team Mobile company. So, to me... I'm gonna go cap. I don't think I don't think they're as uncarrier as they used to be. Um, all right, moving on. Next one, real or cap? Verizon will offer a more generous network access feature set as C-band scales. Mm. Well, we just said they need to do that, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go true on that. I think. I think. I don't know if they will update existing plans, but I think they will introduce new plans at the very least with additional features. Like maybe we get 1080p streaming. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'll go real, and there's also the real possibility that they actually come out with a more expensive premium plan <laughs> to take advantage of the C van. Dennis, that takes it over a hundred bucks flat rate. Like the listed <laughs> price would be like a hundred bucks. I could so see them doing that, and then they could they could do something like if you do X number of lines, then it becomes this, or if you combine it with FiOS, it becomes this. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Um... <clears throat> I'm going to go with real. I think they do have to be a little bit more generous. That would mean the 1080p. That would mean the higher deprio cap as well. Uh, what are they at right now? 75 gigs for the most? Steed, no, uh, 50 gigs. They I downgraded. Oh, I regret to inform you that when they introduced their new plans in 2020, they downgraded the top tier plan from 75 gigs to 50 gigs. That needs to be competitive with T-Mobile and AT&T for their most yeah. premium plan. So... That needs to go to 100 gigs, at least. Okay. We just got a few more, I think two or three more left. All right. Okay. Real or cap? T-Mobile's Magenta Max is the best postpaid plan in the biz. Real. <sighs> cap. I'm going cap. I'm going cap. It is not. I think. I think one could argue... Based on the pricing and the allowances, it could be viewed as such for some. I still think there's a better plan. But if there's a 1A, I think Magenta Max is the 1B. Okay, so that's that's my take. Go ahead, Dennis. My take is that Magenta Max is really good, especially because tax and fees are included. Mm -hmm. My problem is that the network isn't. I mean, we're talking about the plan, so the network doesn't matter. But, like, I just feel like HBO Max and the included perks that at and is offering are better overall than what, mentioned, what Magenta Max is doing. Plus, in my eyes, even though at and is $85, they've got so many different discounts up the wazoo that pretty much everybody can qualify for that that plan is usually like 75 to $65. I mean, you got the uh, AARP that Stetson brought up. You got the various employers that have partnerships with AT&T, the first net discount, um, the back to school student discount, the teacher discount. Like T-Mobile doesn't have really any discounts that apply to Magenta Max, to my knowledge, outside of military. Um, 55 plus. Well, that's not for Magenta Max, though. Yeah, it is. Can you do a 55 plus Magenta Max? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Let me okay. pull this up. But um, but and then also there's the whole AT and T discount, which is pr like Uverse discount, which is pretty substantial. So for yeah. these reasons, the fact that there's so many discounts that I'm pretty sure everybody can probably qualify for, Unlimited Elite is the better option. Go ahead, Stetson. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to raw plan value, I think Magenta Max has it. I would rather uh, you can see 
$45 a line with Magenta Max 55 plus for two nice. lines. So it is, nice. it is available. Just want to throw that out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I think what gives in my opinion, what gives this plan the edge is the international data while abroad. I think that's a really nice perk to have. You're still getting data in Canada and Mexico. I think five gigs is plenty for most people. And uh, taxes and fees included, that can save you anywhere from 240 to $480 per year. Uh, so I think looking at the plan fundamentals itself, I personally just feel Magenta Max is a better value. That said, I can easily see how AT&T uh, if they have better network in your area, then obviously AT&T Elite is a better deal. Um, but really, I think you're sacrificing or you're trading the unlimited international data for unlimited data in Canada and Mexico, and you're swapping out Netflix for HBO. So I don't know. In my eyes, I'm giving T-Mobile. I like it. Also, on a quick side note, uh, I just wanted to say me and Sneed were wrong. Stetson, you were right. Uh, Magenta Plus was $85. Right, I actually do have Stetson that here. Wins. Stetson wins. <laughs> it was forty three dollars. Here's the old Magenta Plus. So, I, I was concerned about that because I was I was very convinced. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. It was an insider yeah. joke. Me and Steam met behind the scenes to try to fool you, Stetson. <laughs> I, you know the uh, I don't know if you guys know. There's a, a gentleman who hangs out on some of the Twitter spaces and the live streams, and he told me that Magenta Max is more expensive. That's why I always assumed I just took his word. I never even cared to yeah, look at yeah, the website, no. but it's clearly listed as the same price. Every time I've looked, it's it's the yeah. same price. So I, okay. I, it's T-Mobile did what AT and T did. Okay. AT and T, the new one carrier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, my follow up to that was real or cap. AT and T Elite is the best postpaid plan in the biz. I say real. Dennis I say real. real. And then I'm going Stetson, cap. He has I to go cap because he went on on Magenta Max. Extra, I think extra <laughs> taxes and fees for me just make it. And this is this is just plan, right? You just plan. If you take network network into consideration, that's where I think it really uh, it really depends. Yeah, we'll leave the network out of it. We'll just assume all things consistent on the network side. Good. We'll call it good experience or whatever. Yeah. I'll just say this though, on the topic of the international roaming, I think having unlimited data in Canada and Mexico is more beneficial to most. I, I took the opposite approach because I think five gigs is plenty for your one to two week trip to Canada and Mexico. And I'd rather have that plus free international data than having to spend $10 a day for an international day pass from AT&T. But see, I've used T-Mobile's international roaming abroad. And because of how the traffic gets routed back through the U.S., the ping is really slow and the speeds are really slow. So to me, it's just as, it's just as bad as having no data. Sure. So oh, wow. I'd rather... I'd rather have unlimited in Canada and Mexico since these are like border countries. I mean, literally Pennsylvania is not that far away from Canada. I could probably drive up there in like maybe eight hours uh, and, you know, have a good old time. Uh, and then I could always do something like buying an Airloo SIM, eSIM, when I go international and have a much better <laughs> yeah, experience. Yeah. Right on. It's so true. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to Info Assistant. It's crazy. I, I thought I've seen every single... T-Mobile commercial, all 7,000 of them. I guess I haven't seen this one where they said they're upping benefits without the price. All right, last one. Real or cap? Wireless carriers offering home internet is going to be a success. Real or cap? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go real. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> i knew this was going to be tough for dennis it's so i mean d- define success like they're going to financially do well with it you or... define success if i define success it makes it easy on you i'm not making it easy on you <laughs> i'm gonna say cap and my re and my reason for this is this is that i have a very strong feeling that home users demands are going to continue to grow and outpace what the cellular carriers are going to be able to provide i go back to the old saying that fiber is the gold standard it's where the u.s has to be wireless is a decent solution to try to get coverage out into these non like completely underserved areas but at the end of the day if america wants to be competitive and be able to do the things that we need to do I'm a firm believer that there's not going to be an alternative than having fiber to the home, basically. And that's the reason why I say cap. By 2030, I think there are going to be 20 million wireless ISP home internet customers. I think this is real. And there's two reasons why. 
nobody's motivated to put fiber in a lot of these places. Most of the time it's DSL and satellite, and that's trash. We can run the fiber to the tower and then get gigabit speed at the tower with C band and whatever other mid band they can, you know, and all the combination of all the spectrum assets. And I also think the customer care for home ISPs is trash. And I don't think that Starlink is going to serve as many people as they think they are. And that's that may not even just be for rural. That may be an emphasis on like really hard to reach places like mountains and stuff like that where carriers don't even have cell towers. All right. So I think that fixed wireless access is going to be real. And that's because of rural America and monetizing the additional, you know, capacity that's at these sites that get upgraded. For every T-Mobile uh, cellular site that gets N41, I'd put 30 home internet customers on that tower. 30 of them. And I will collect 50 to $60 from each one every month. They will be happy. Believe you me. They will be thrilled. Because the thing about the Royal America situation is also the fact that you can put up a two, three hundred foot site that can send out two point five gigahertz frequencies five miles. Can I add two caveats to what I said? Mm -hmm. One caveat is, is if states get rid of the laws banning local municipalities from running their own fiber. It's crazy, Dennis. Isn't that crazy? It is. They absolute. banned it in Ohio. It's absolutely nuts. But <laughs> if state lawmakers get rid of these stupid bans, then I think that local municipalities will solve the problem themselves and run fiber in the, a lot of those hard to reach places to the point that like the cell phone internet really is like just those mountains possibly where Starlink would probably better serve. And the second caveat is this. If Biden's infrastructure plan passes with that $100 billion investment, I have a very sneaking suspicion that we start seeing like uh Similar to what happened with electricity back in the day, that we might, if I'm lucky, see the government actually just run their own fire to people's homes. Okay. And if either of those two things happen, then there's no point. It's redundant for the cell phone networks to exist because fiber. Sneed, you won't disagree with me on this. No, I won't. Fiber is I the gold not. standard. It is. It's the end game, 100%. Yeah, I, I basically just asked myself one question. Is this beneficial to consumers? I thought it was. It gives yeah. people more options, helps people in more rural locations stay connected. I think that's a win. That's that's I how I define success. And uh, it's a simple, yeah, I think that's true. Absolutely. Right. See, my big, I'm sorry, I, I know I keep rambling, but my one, my one issue with wireless is I think it's tremendous. I think it can let people watch YouTube and do all those fun things that are like video related. The big problem and the thing that needs to be overcome is reliability and latency. Because most of the things that we do need on the internet require very little bandwidth. It's much more sensitive to latency. Like working from home, my VPN connection only needs may maybe 25 megabits per second. That's really me overestimating it for the download. And maybe like 3 megabits per second upload. But you on know what's a specific task? Just in general. Like I'm saying even at So your most usage. intensive task requires a 25 by 3. Right. Okay. Um, and... But you know what is way more noticeable? If I have packet loss, I'll just disconnect. Or if my latency spikes, my, my, my computer will just freeze, right? Like if any of those happen, that's way noticeable. Gaming, you know, if the latency... You're done. You know, just starts jumping all over the place. You're rubber banding, disconnecting from the server. But gaming literally can use kilobytes per second at times, depending on the tick rate of the server that you're connecting to. Right. Um, audio. Audio is another thing that uses very little bandwidth but it's latency sensitive because it's time time sensitive right um like the only things that require large pipes are video and large file downloads that's when you get the real benefits of those gigabits like when stetson wants to upload a youtube video that's when he's saturating his gigabit connection but not right now where we're having this conversation you know no. and then internet of things devices too right they're also latency dependent so i think wireless home internet's great it ha i think it has its own role to fill and i think more choices are good I just don't know if it's ever going to be able to fill what fiber could do when it comes to latency, especially if we're talking about like Internet of Things. Like I'm picturing the farm of the future, a farm where there's smart sensors for the water so that the crops are being watered in the most efficient way possible in like dry climates like California as we try to fight global warming. 
And I don't know if that's going to be a possible thing to happen without, you know, farmers having access to fiber internet, you know? They are saying that standalone 5G services will be sub 5 milliseconds immediately yeah, but, at onset. But the T-Mobile 5G standalone home internet that I've been seeing, I mean, I mean you saw my ping, you know? <sighs> I'm not I'm not holding the industry to the T-Mobile performance metric. Like I'm not I'm not getting in a T-Mobile operated autonomous vehicle right now. I'm good. I'm just saying I, I'll like wa I'll walk it out. I mean the way I like, look at it, it's like this, okay? We're not there we're not there yet, Dennis. It, it's I, I think, like it's like when cable companies said Doxus 3.1 will allow for 10 gigabits of download speed and 2 gigabits per second upload speed. We're nowhere near that. Most cable operators cap out at 40 meg for their upload, and most cap out at a gig at the download. Now, that's impressive in its own right. I'm not saying it's not impressive. And we do have some stuff coming to market. The Doxus upgrades are going to be pretty nice. Yeah, and, and yes. I'm looking forward to Doxus for it, put on a full duplex. But these are like, there's these theoretical talks of like what something can do, and then there's the real world. Like, even my home Wi Fi can't get below 10 millisecond, you know? My home Wi Fi. What, I mean, what a, you mean the wireless side of it? Mm -hmm, mm hmm okay and then to the to the ethernet cable oh it? hardwired i'm three milliseconds all day with fios oh, three millisecond but i'm saying the wi-fi like inherently there's gonna be just things that get in the way whether it be interference power x y and z you name the condition that can affect but dennis it. i want you to think back to what they have right now in these places if 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 you're telling me that the person with viasat right now has viasat could get Verizon's ultra wideband when C band deploys a 200 megahertz channel in Montana. They're two, three miles from the site. The site is two, three hundred feet up. They have an RSRP of minus 90. It's a clean signal. There's no noise. There's nobody around. There's no interference. And they're getting gigabit speed. And their, their latency is sub five, sub three milliseconds because it's standalone 5G. I mean, I now, think they now, would switch now mind to you, heartbeat. M mind you, it's going to be gigabit speed. The uplink might be like two, three hundred up. That's still plenty. That's still plenty. <laughs> and they're going to, bro. Verizon's got it right now for fifty bucks. If you're a wireless customer. Oh yeah, I mean that's 70. plenty. That's plenty. I just, it, it goes back to, and they if, had Viaset. So what it, was their latency at Viaset? Over a thousand. But it just goes back to, <laughs> it. Look, it just goes back to this. Okay, if the money's going to be spent. I'm tired of us investing in these alternative solutions when we clearly know what the gold standard is. I know the upfront pain will be short, but we we could have had fiber to the home for everybody ten times over with the money that we but spent. But Dennis, already. we don't need federal funding for Verizon and T-Mobile. They're willing to build this on their own accord. <sighs> yeah. I I'm with you on the fiber. Yeah. I'm saying I'm not getting in the way of these carriers. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. I'd still like to see the fiber eventually get there. Maybe the goal is 2030. Maybe the goal is 2040. I don't know, dude. Nationally yeah. have a fiber network like hey, you talk about the electric grid. Yeah. Maybe that's a decade away. I'm just saying if the carriers are ready to do it, let them have at it. If they want to put up a cell phone tower on some side of the Smoky Mountains somewhere <laughs> and there's like some shanty off on the side that needs internet, go ahead. Do it. Whatever. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I got, man. That's all I got. We're an hour and 48 minutes in. There were, I, I don't know, we peaked over 100 viewers. So a uh, big shout out to everybody here during the live stream. Let's go ahead and hashtag two live crew for everybody that was here uh, at the time of the broadcast. And then we'll hashtag replay crew for everyone watching this on DVR. If you are watching this while snacking or eating dinner, hashtag ravioli gang. And uh, hashtag Mod Squad for all the blue wrenches and, and all the blue names out there. And I know that there were some uh, super chats earlier, so, and I can't go back on frickin' StreamYard. The dang on duck, bro. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. The it's dog! A duck. <laughs> but that's really it. Do you guys want to go ahead and, I mean, it's it's not shameless at all. You guys are like, you know, you guys are my friends. So go ahead and plug what you guys are up to. Go ahead, Dennis, go ahead. Tell us about what's going on. Yeah, so um, for the best phone plan, uh, best phone plans podcast, we actually just did a recent episode where we had the CEO and founder it. of Airloo on. He was an incredible guest, <laughs> um, and thanks to him, we're going to be getting in contact. Seth, Seth Akasher, who we're going to be in contact with potentially, right? Uh, well, we don't know yet, so I don't know. Well, we we talked about the the carriers in South Korea, LG. 
Yeah, yeah, we might be able to get in contact with some of those. Anyway, we yeah. have a podcast. It's awesome. Uh, Best Phone Plans podcast. And we love Sneed. We talk tech. We talk phones. Sneed's been on the show. We're probably going to have to have him back on. And, uh, you know, we, we talk cell phone plans and we focus on prepaid carriers. If you're interested, consider subscribing. Um, and make sure you're subscribed to Sneed if you're not already, uh, because I love what he's putting out. He is on top of the wireless news, guaranteed first person to publish a video with what you need to know the day it happens. So get subscribed if you haven't already. That's what I've got. Yeah, and get on his Patreon. He does three streams a week. This man is a wild man. So make sure you're supporting him on Patreon so you get access to his extra content. And uh, same thing with us. If you guys want to get some dank emos to use, uh, come become a part of our Patreon. We actually just got done doing some blooper content last night when we were testing around with Stetson's audio and like showing off his setup. Uh, Stetson, did you upload that yet? No, not at all. Okay, well, it's it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming to the Patreon. It's something hilarious. We were messing around with uh, Stetson's audio, and, and there's a little sneak peek at my house with my networking setup, which is kind of cool. Nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've just been working on stuff. We're going to be doing an exclusive live stream here soon where it's just me and Stetson with the Patreon members. And I think that's going to be when we crack out the 5G ginger beer nice. and do it on stream to taste. Nice. Thank you, uh, MS, for that super chat. Appreciate you. I know you had an, another one earlier. So uh, the 271 must have some kind of meaning to you because that's the second one. And I'm pretty sure that you've had multiple super chats before, and they were always two dollars and seventy one cents. So, yeah, I, I'll try to figure out what that represents. I have no clue what that is. Sneed, look at Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I know we got a ninety nine cent super chat. Thank you, Anthony. No, for but that. what his comment was? Does, does your, your oh dog? Come on, man. <laughs> EBT. <laughs> so that's Thank if you don't you. know that's like it's like food stamps if you don't know what EBT is. Yeah, that that's the, the like. We have like the Ohio Direction card or whatever for food stamps. Um, right on. What else? Oh, all Stetson and Dennis's links are down in the description box. The webpage, the YouTube channel, and then I also put a link to their most recent podcast so you guys could listen. If you're done here and you loved it, theirs is even better than mine. So enjoy the Sneed. enjoy that show. Thank you. you Steve's it, being man. humble. We're we're equally good. <laughs> <laughs> man. Um, I, for my Patreon, I do at least one dedicated upload video, like, um, like a regular video. I do a dedicated weekly live stream podcast, and then I do a couple of early access videos. So I, I try to offer like perks and benefits to my Patreon. So basically it's like, oh, I can't get enough of Sneed's channel. I need more. Let me support him on Patreon and get some more access to more stuff. And... This is the best part about the Patreon. I was able to put a stranglehold onto Carlos, literally grabbed his arm and put him in an arm lock and, and, and toe hold, and I forced him to put a discount for Los Mobile. Wow. If you are a Patreon on Tier 3 or, or the Sneed Army tier, you can get a 5 to 10% discount on your Los Mobile service. And so on the topic of discounts, if you watch the most recent episode of our podcast with the guests from Arrowloo and you have any trips booked or plan mm -hmm. to be booked, mm -hmm. we actually have a discount code somewhere in that video. So nice. there's a reason for you to watch that if you want to get a discount off of Arrowloo. They're a good, uh, good carry to use if you're going to be traveling internationally anytime soon. Yeah. When I approached Carlos about getting that discount, I was like, look, man, I'm trying to push the Patreon. And I want to give the people more. So I was able to kind of turn a sub account at Los Mobile for the Patreon so, uh, supporters. So you can get like a static IP address feature. Uh, you can get a hotspot plan with a 10% discount. Uh, voice line, I think, is a 5% discount. Hold up. Los supporting... Mobile does static IPs? Yes. That is yeah. huge. It's big time. For anybody who's doing business, yes. Dude, oh my god. I think you, they're the only the way, wireless. And by the way, that's where the Patreon support comes into play. Los will put it on top. As long as you're a Sneed Army or a Super SMT, the top two tiers, mm -hmm. you can get the static IP. Well, that's that's pretty uh, That's pretty dank. Okay. Dude, I'm telling you, dog. I I, I had Carlos in the chokehold. He, he couldn't even say anything. He's what like, a... He just nodded his head. <laughs> What's Carlos doing now, though? Like, I haven't talked to him in a hot minute. Is he? Is he? Uh, is he still doing okay? Even though AT and T came out the new plans. Yeah, he's doing fine. I think for a lot of people, 
the single line option, it's really nice. Not like the only way you're getting a rate like Los Mobile is if you're getting multiple lines. So right. True. So he kills the single line. He still has the best offer for a hotspot. Oh, for sure. It's it's still the best in the game. And you got to keep in mind that priority on Los Mobile can't be beat. Momentarily, first net might be higher priority, but on regular operations, it's the same. Right? So you're never getting deprioed. That's like that's that's crucial, especially for somebody like, you know, you were talking about getting a static IP. Anybody who knows anything about that and is interested in that also understands the importance of priority. Right? And then he, he's got a he's, there's a feature on the accounts that he does. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a task booster that can be activated for a specific tasks. It's kind of cool, bro. I all I know is that Los is also about to start doing smartwatches. He's going to start doing uh the Apple Watches. Once he does that, he's got people connected. You got wearables and you got home internet. Dude, I'm doing Los mobile home internet. Oh, I know. You've been coming in great. Psh, killing it, dog. So did you gotta, ditch? Did you ditch Verizon's then now that you got Los? I gave it to my dad. Oh, you gave it to the shop? Bro, Spectrum is trash. Why? Well, I, uh, I thought you my had dad. Cox. Oh, my you're... dad. My, oh, so Spectrum's my dad, bad too? Yes. He's like, he's like, come over and fix my internet. I'm like, what do you mean fix your internet? What is the provider for? He goes, they came here. They told me they fixed it, and we're getting buffering video. I go over there. I test it. He's getting 50 megabits. I said, Pop, what are you paying for? He said, I'm paying for 200 by 20. I'm standing next to the router getting 50. I connect it. You know, I, I, I start troubleshooting. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. It's having problems connecting. It's disconnecting. So if you're like, say, for example, like my brother's gaming, mm -hmm. he's fallen out. He's disconnecting. Right? He's rubber banding. You were talking about the bouncing back and forth and in and out. It was terrible. So I was like, all right, I got a solution. I'll run a, a Los Mobile at my house. I'll give them the Verizon home internet. And they've loved it. They got a small cell at the end of the street. Oh, they Lit do. Literally two houses away, there's a small cell. So they're getting gigabit. No, no, it, it's it's LTE. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's LTE. It's like 250 by 80. Oh, I thought uh, the home internet had a cap of 50 meg on LTE. No, no, I got the 5G home over there. Oh, wow. But it's running LTE. The oh. 5G home on LTE. The Bro, big pissed. hack. Oh, they're they're pissed. Verizon's oh, I, pissed. Oh yeah, they called me, dude. They're like, "Hey, um, your your home internet's not pinging. <laughs> it's not pinging a millimeter wave node. Something's wrong. Come call us up. Call us back." I'm like, ah, "I ain't answering this call." Well, and and honestly, I'm just it'll be fine until they deploy C band, and then all these sites start getting C band. It's it's a thing of the past. Dude, that's that's huge. I'm just surprised that two now two different cable providers are trash out in the CLE like that is surprising and also your dad your pops don't got Uverse no not, not a, an option not a, no they have Uverse here do you well you didn't get the fiber yet right or did you get the fiber no fiber is supposedly coming in August it's Man. been delayed twice it was originally May then it was June now Dude, it's August Sneed I'm telling you right now man once you get fiber your mind is actually going to be literally blown like, you're literally never going to be able to go back to anything else. You'll understand why I'm the way I am once you experience fiber. Well, I'm going to start the minute I get the fiber, you know, I'm going to start running all the cables I need around the house. Dude. Right? So I can connect all the TVs, so I can run everything to all these devices. And Dude, just picture go. a world. Just picture a world <laughs> where you'll never have to think about bandwidth ever again because you literally have too much that you know what to do with. Like, legit, picture that one, world. It's one hell of a problem. I mean, I just... I just need the uplink. Sneed, you'll I mean, literally... Who needs more than a couple hundred megabits of downlink? Nobody, because here's the fun fact. I don't know if you knew this. YouTube actually caps out your uploads at approximately 300 megabits per second. How much? 300 megabits per second, roughly. So when you're uploading a large file, it's that's the fastest it can be? Mm -hmm. That's a server restriction. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, roughly, that's where you're capping out. You literally have more bandwidth then a lot of servers know what to do with when it comes to upload. That's how wild your fiber connection is. But for somebody who's an enterprise, it does matter. Mm, for sure. No, yeah. Right. Dude, enterprises, I don't know if you know this, Steed, but enterprises, if they're big enough, probably have like 100 gigabit circuits. 
and they literally probably have like dark fiber ran to the other buildings so they have like this massive like local area network essentially trans crossing like miles and miles of the country where they're not even hopping on the public internet anymore they're literally just going from their own Private like Cis- right. cisco equipment yeah it's it's nuts <laughs> um there's here's the best part sneed if you were one of the lucky few that actually lives somewhere where municipal fiber is for what we pay for a gigabit, you can get like ten gig. It's actually insane. Like, yeah, you know, we were talking about how I said Fios raised their price to like ninety bucks. Ninety bucks gets you like ten gigabit in areas where oh. there's like municipal fiber. Wow. Yeah. See, I'm just I'm just trying to live the three hundred by three hundred life. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> you'd be you'd be happy with like legit. I honestly, honestly think you'd be happy with two hundred by two hundred. I don't yeah, think you would yeah. notice a difference. I don't I, like, think they have it, but yeah, I'd take it. Yeah. Yeah, like after somewhere around 200 megabits to 300 megabits per second, the point of diminishing returns really kicks in, um, and you just stop noticing a difference. Like I'll be Moose, honest, Moose is really pushing me hard to get gigabit, and I'm just like, dude, I'll take the entry level plan. Save like if money. if the, if I'm paying for tiers, you know, if if gigabit is the top tier, but he's like, look at the price. He's like, the entry level price is 45, or yeah, I think it's 40 or 45. And that Probably gets you 40. at 300, 300, and then it's 500, 500, and then the, the gigabit tier is 60 bucks or whatever. He's like, you're going to be paying 15 bucks more. Just and get that's, the gigabit. That's over I'm $150 like, a year. You and that's how that. I looked at it. I was like, I don't need all you that extra overhead. Right? And that's that literally the reason. And that's the, literally the reason why I have gigabit with Fios, because I was like, huh, 40 bucks versus like 80 bucks. I was like, eh. For the difference in performance, <laughs> like, might as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't – it doesn't really matter. If it makes Moose happy, I'll just – fine. I'll get listen, the Gigabit. Listen, <laughs> listen, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. The thing that Gigabit does is it makes for good speed tests, but in all sincerity, even myself, I can't saturate the Gigabit connection. Like, unless I intentionally go out of my way to, like – I don't know, get a bunch of torrents going or something. I don't know I, if I could. I, I really, I'm not sure if I could figure but, out a way in but my see, normal day usage. But see, that's a beautiful thing. That that, <laughs> reality, <laughs> that reality existing where I have, my problem is that I have too fast of internet. That is a good problem to have, really and is. I'm glad that I have that problem now. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of hoping for like a millimeter wave node right outside my house. Call up Verizon and say, hey, I don't mind. Just go ahead and put it right there on that light pole. I'm Like cool Sneed. With it. <laughs> like Steve, I don't miss like when I was dealing with ten megabits per second upload on Comcast. Oh. I do not miss having QoS enabled, so that way my freaking um, smart Amazon smart speaker doesn't just decide to like just randomly consume the connection and my freaking bit rate drops. That really, that little dinky thing would kill your speed. Well, yeah, because here's the thing: if you don't have QoS enabled on your router. Then what happens is is the rinky dinky Amazon thing when it wants to communicate with Jeff Bezos's brain to collect all my speech <laughs> just decides to like hog all the upload speed for a couple seconds while it does that. You and when that out. happens, there's only ten megabits to go around. Mm-hmm. So whatever else I was doing just gets tanked. That's why I had yeah. QoS enabled and made it so this uh, PC on the network had a static IP address and I set it to the highest priority level. So if it if it detects any type of gaming or anything else I had set up. You know what you uh, did, Dennis? That's network slicing, buddy. You basically that's your own network slicing, man. Yeah, I mean QS has been around forever, but yeah, yeah. you can you could think of it like that. Yeah. I mean I, that but that's the thing. I don't have to do that anymore. Like legit. That's, nice. that's that's the beautiful thing. I literally here's the thing too. I have more stuff connected than ever. I literally have a home security system with cameras constantly uploading are they all dude, is it a 1080p system dude it's 4k cameras oh yeah my nice. comcast connection would die each camera is using like legit like seven megabits per second continually uploading you probably have what five four or five cameras uh actually i only have two but it does the trick but that's still 14 megabits per second of sure. upload just in the cameras right dedicated right yeah, so like that's <laughs> that would eat up that 10 megabit channel easy. <laughs> got a couple of 4K TVs. Oh yeah, uh, two actually, one in the bedroom, one in the living room. I got that nice Sony. I don't know if you were there for that stream, but I bought this nice Sony like Master Series. Mm-hmm. Like, f- <laughs> it's a 4K TV that literally costed like 4K type of TV <laughs> mm-hmm. um, from Best Buy, and uh, 
it's nice and i got like a surround sound system hooked up to it i got smart i got smart fridges smart dryer smart washer smart smart uh huge smart lights i'm just going smart home everything i'm actually i need to buy blinds and there's smart blinds that you can buy that like actually like move the little uh cloth like you put them up on the bar so my house is basically going to be a smart house nice danny contact me on patreon i'll explain to you exactly how you could do that help you get that discount on your lowest mobile mm. oh someone oh. else mentioned something important no data cap is also nice no more data cap yeah, i used two terabytes awesome. of data with fios the last month two terabytes need no no concerns no concerns and here's the best part one terabyte of that was straight up upload. Wow. Yeah, I did. Literally what I did was I'd look legit. I took this PC, just did a whole backup to Stetson's fantastic unlimited Google Drive uh, and just started backing up everything. <laughs> and then like I think the security assistant used like I want to say the security system probably used like 200 gigabytes or something like that. Just uploading the footage 24 wow. seven around because the, yeah. the security system uses like 30 gigabytes a day, something like that. I believe it. Sounds about right. Can't wait to get it. Honestly, I, I'm super excited. Dennis, you you got me convinced. Fiber is going to be the savior of the SMT. Uh, Stetson's got that Mooney fiber. I can't wait to get in on something like that. I mean, I won't have municipal fiber. It'll be AT and T. AT and T is the, probably the second best fiber provider in the U.S. With the only one being better being Google Fiber. Mm. So, like, legit, if I could rank it, that uh, Sneed because Google Fiber. AT&T fiber, then Fios. Like, honestly, I would Some trade people tell me Fios is better than AT&T. Mm -mm, the AT&T no. pricing is better. 60 oh, pricing. Bucks. Okay. Okay. Pricing, but also, I mean, the only thing that's bad about AT&T fiber is I believe they force you to use their rental, and that's the yeah. only bad thing they about need it. They hardware. I hear people talk about that that gateway. It's pretty pretty but crummy. But AT&T is spot on when it came to speeds, because when I first got my Fios installed, I was having problems. My latency was like 20 milliseconds when it went first installed, and I wasn't getting anywhere close to my speeds. It took a it took a little bit of time for that to sure. get fixed. Hey, Troy, data-only plans do exist on Los Mobile. In fact, that's what I'm. That's what's holding down this live stream, actually. It's a data-only Los Mobile. I got a Netgear Nighthawk. It runs through an Asus router. We're cooking. Hey Stetson, you know. you're being quiet over there, but we're late in the stream. Why don't you why don't you share something really special and secret for the best phone plan? Share something secret. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know. Come on, I anything. I don't, I don't have anything. I I was just hanging out with you guys. Can can what how about can I break something that you're gonna be doing with I won't say the whole story, but can I say something about Xfendi that you're gonna be doing if you don't want to talk about story? Sure. Break the story, breaking news. All right. So guys, Stetson is getting Xfinity Internet. And he's going to be testing out Xfinity Internet, and he's going to be texting out Xfinity Mobile. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Are you keeping all your other services active? This is correct. This okay. Is correct. Okay. All right. So you're not ditching the Mooney Fiber. We're we're keeping we're keeping the Municipal Fiber. We're getting Comcast, and I might try and get T-Mobile Home Internet as well. I feel like that'd be a good trifecta to have. You know, maybe so get he's... most mobile as well in there. Uh, you know, really, really get everything. Make sure I've got internet. So basically, the genesis of this is this. Since he's going to be testing out Comcast to get Xfinity Mobile, we're going to do a comparison of wireless versus cable versus fiber, the ultimate wow. showdown, to see how they really stack up. And since what? Stetson lives in a good area for T-Mobile's home internet, it makes it even – it's the best case scenario for wireless. You better wait. You better you better hope they get a better gateway. That Nokia trash can. Oh, man. Trash. You know what's, what's really funny, Sneed? <laughs> I, I have a conversation with my friend Austin. He he still has T Mobile Home Internet. I think he was gonna cancel and they gave him a coupon. He kept it. Uh the gateway oh, they actually keep sending just, me money. They the gateway of his broke. Like it's gone. Yeah. Oh, oh know, are dude. you still getting money too for yours? They just sent me another gift card, a MasterCard gift card refund. Wow. They already gave me credits. They gave me the service for free for five months. I stopped. You actually said, can't get rid of it at this point. I literally, I was like, please stop. You guys are okay. You got your customer care is amazing. You saw my video. Dennis, yeah, yeah, I do remember right? that. Yeah. And that's in, you know, I saw it, but I honestly don't understand how you were getting mass or visa prepaid cards when I had a fight with T-Mobile just to get a $20 <laughs> credit. <laughs> Dude, they gave me, they credited me for my first month, second, third, and fourth month. I wasn't using it. didn't work. Every time I would connect to it, my video was buffering. Like YouTube TV, Hulu, Netflix, it would buffer. I'd run a speed test, and it says 150 down, 130 down. And then I couldn't hold live streams on it. So literally, it was a secondary connection. 
and I never even connected to it, honestly. And I told them to stop. I'm like, please stop giving me credits. Just cancel it. I'm sending it back to you. Send me, just email me the, the return slip, the, and I'm, I'm sending it back. It's, it doesn't make sense for you to keep giving me credits. But what they, what they want to do is this. I figured it out. They don't want you to leave. They want you to stay in hopes that the issues resolve. Right? They, they send you new modems. Hey, Kimberly. They, send, they sent me three of the gateways. The same trash Nokia gateway. I was begging for the LT one. I'm like, send please, me the old one anything, from three years please. ago. <laughs> I was like, please, I don't want to go back to Cox. And then Los Mobile came around, and that was the end of it. Game over. You know? And then Verizon Home Internet. Guys, the let me tell you, the, the Samsung gateway that they're using for the Verizon Home is the truth. <laughs> it, it does not get hot. It does not slow down. It updates at night while you sleep. So you don't have to worry about it randomly turning off in the middle of the day. All right. I had all those problems with the Nokia gateway. My wife was like, there's something wrong with the gateway. It's flashing right now. I look up. It's like overheating. I feel the sides (laughs) of it and the thing's like smoking hot. I'm like, literally, I'm about to put this thing in the freezer. Like, this is BS. You know what's funny is, though, I watched videos on YouTube of people actually taking a, so basically taking apart the trash can. Because there's actual, like, antenna connectors where you can, like, hook up, like, external antennas. And I watch people put it outside on, like, the roofs of their houses, and apparently it just works. Meanwhile, Crazy. like, meanwhile, there's your experience where it's just chilling inside, nice air-conditioned basement, and it's, like, overheating. You know what I'm saying? That's so bad. It was awful. I, I almost... I'm... So here's the thing. I am a targeted man. What do you mean? I was... A, so a friend of mine messaged me and said, hey, Sneed. You're on the T-Mobile subreddit today. I said, oh, okay, cool. Is it good? Did somebody share one of my videos? He said, it's not good. They hate you. And I was like, the feeling's mutual. I hate them too. So what's referred to as the T-Mobile thong resides on the T-Mobile subreddit. So what I'm saying is if I do a a review of the T-Mobile home internet, they're going to get their pink thongs in a bunch. Because it was trash. I went through three gateways. They basically halfway decommissioned my tower site. They reduced bandwidth on three different channels. They reduced band 41 twice. They reduced band 25 twice. And now I'm on three megahertz of band 26. What, what, am I, what do you want me to say about the T-Mobile home internet experience? All I could say is that the customer care was tremendous. They kept giving me credits. They kept giving me money and telling me to, and asking me to stay. And yeah, literally but, got to the point where I was like, I can't keep doing this with you guys. This is wrong. Good I can't customer keep... care doesn't fix a bad product. And that's the problem. And I told them, I will gladly try the service at some point if you guys improve it. It's awful. Yeah. It's bad I mean, here. I'll say good customer service kept me a T-Mobile customer for six years because – Sneed, I don't know how long you've been a T-Mobile customer, but if you remember the real true growing pains from like 2013 to like 2015. Oh, you're talking about like post um, Metro merger. Yeah. Right. Like this is like when John Ledger just took the helm. They were just starting to get LT kind of like rolled out. Those were real growing pains days. Like I remember when LT lit up in my small town and it was still running off of a T1 backhaul where the, where the full possible bandwidth on an uncongested night was 1.5 megabits per second. That was the capacity. That didn't get resulted like like Q4 of 25, uh, 2015, maybe like early 2016, when they reached out to the local operator of the area called Armstrong Cable, and they ran like fiber. And that's when we saw like speeds pick up to roughly like 100 meg, uh, 150 megabits per second, because it's using band 2 10 by 10 and band 12 5 by 5. Although they did upgrade it with um, standalone uh, N fifty one, uh, excuse me, N seventy one, which also I just gotta say, Sneed, you know what you were talking about? You were getting four forty megabits on N seventy one. Not once in my life have I seen those speeds because everywhere <laughs> I've seen N seventy one, it is five by five. There, it's it's slow, it's dude. It's slow. five by five everywhere. It's no better than band twelve LTE. Bro, That's I'm the being worst. I'm band being a serious. I'm That's being like serious. One- a heart attack. That's like one megabit over here. Bro, band 12 LT is sometimes faster than NR71. 
I'm not joking. I can literally go into my band select, do two speed tests right now. You guys have high market share for T-Mobile there, don't you? In Pittsburgh? Yeah. Can't possibly. They've always been the weakest. It's just a very not well-designed network in this. I don't know what the problem is. I really true. From the bottom of my heart, I truly don't know what's going wrong here with T-Mobile. Because because if you look at the map, like, remember I told you that one guy that like helped me out with getting on Magenta Max? He sent me like a map of the towers. I showed Stetson. There was a tower literally, like I'm not joking, two turns in my car. And I was by the tower. It was literally sitting on top of like a corporate building. There was a cell site there with N41. And I could not connect to N41. I could literally see the top of the blinking light. I've had that problem. Like I could literally see the blinking light on the top of the tower that airplanes have. I'm, I'm within striking range of the site. And I'm stuck on standalone N71, and I can't I can't connect N41. It's right there. Yeah, um, guys, yeah. I gotta run, but it was awesome being on. Thank you. I, Seth. I'm I'm down you. to keep marathoning it. He gets hungry. <laughs> I'm no real talk, Sneed. We did a four hour stream. There was a part where I like sold it so Stetson could eat. <laughs> I'm down to <laughs> I'm actually down to do another one. But honestly, one of the things I'll tell you a side plan. I I meant to text you about this, but um, I want to do a really long stream for my birthday stream. If if Stetson's game. And I would love to have you on for like at least an hour. I'm there, um, bro. And we could just do like rotations of like big guests, like have you on for an hour. I would love to also. I, I reached out to your boy Peter. I want to get him on for like one of my like Patreon shows. I'm trying to make some extra content because like the dentist nice. shows. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I, and I definitely want to talk to Moose. Moose has definitely got those hot spicy takes. <laughs> um, what what is is does Moose work as an engineer? Or what what is Moose? Moose has Moose is um he has engineering background. Uh, so he's he's been in engineering. Uh, he's no longer an engineer, but yeah, he's he's worked in engineering. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. He did a lot of. He actually was previously employed by T-Mobile. He did work for T-Mobile for a while. I think mm. for at least two years, maybe three years. He knows T-Mobile very well, which is why when people say he doesn't know what he's talking about, au contraire, mon frere, he knows everything about T-Mobile more than they even know. So I got to ask you a question, if you're willing to share, for the people that are here on the late hall. Um, <laughs> you always seem to get some real deep insider scoops. Is that just because people message you on the Discord, or how are you getting these insider? A lot of uh, all my information comes from internal at the companies. I don't out my sources. I don't disclose who they yeah, are. Yeah, I don't want I'm, you to tell the source. Exactly, just, but that yeah. people are always like, "Why do you?" They're like, "Who's your source?" I know what they're trying to do. They want to expose them so they can get them fired. Oh, no, yeah, no. we. You know, I'm not we, doing that to anybody, but these people out here are going to try to hurt others. I don't care what they think about me on the T-Mobile subreddit. The sources I have are credible. They've never, they're, they're batting a thousand, Dennis, mm-hmm. because they're there. You remember that video I did about the T-Mobile um, QCI? Yeah. That was from engineering documents. That's the protocol of the company's engineering documents policies and people told me i was wrong you believe it you believe it i can i can believe it yeah i'll say honestly we've had some people in the the discord that are like patreon members and they've reached out to me and uh like you sneed uh, when they tell us stuff i don't i don't even share it early like i i wait until it's like officially released that way there's no possible way to get in trouble but i use that extra time to like prepare like a video or just think of a topics Mm mm-hmm but I was just I was just generally curious if it was the same deal where people just kind of like reached out to you on Twitter or Discord. People message. reach out to me all the time. People email me. They DM me on Twitter. They volunteer information because they want to help others. Yeah. So they see that I have a platform. They see that people watch my content. They'll sit, reach out. Hey, Sneed, letting you know this is coming down the pipeline. Expect this, an announcement, uh, an update, a network thing, whatever. You know, and, and I I just want to give people the heads up. Bro, I, I used to kill the T-Mobile and Sprint merger news because the people that were inside of the situation were able to relay the information to me. Carlos had a ton of that. Dude, Carlos had some had a really tight connect at T-Mobile. Carlos oh, yeah. was getting a lot of stuff, and they were volunteering it because they wanted people to know. Like, we, were, we knew that T-Mobile was changing. We saw it internally, right? We knew when AT and T was going to be changing certain things. We knew. I'm and 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 Verizon too. You know, remember when I talked about Hans Vestberg and the golden parachute? That's real. I don't remember that, but that's real. 
What, he, he has a golden parachute? He, 100%. And it's heavy. Jesus. Like, it's like, it's almost, could you imagine, like, you have a target on your back and you know it? Like, you're walking on eggshells. And you've yeah. already planned a possible exit? Like, all that stuff is legit, and these people feed me stuff. And I'm not, I don't out anybody, because I don't want anybody to lose their jobs. Right. And sometimes I withhold stuff, and I never talk about it, because I know it's sensitive. Right. No, yeah, you know, it's the same this, thing. That's the same thing right now with us. I mean, there's there's certain things that I know about um, that people have shared about the cable operators that I, I'm looking forward to talking about, but I can't share. Um, but, yeah, I was just curious. I just didn't know because, like, I found it surprising when, when it first happened. Like, I wasn't expecting people to be so, uh, I guess, openly trusting to a public figure that they never met. It's a weird thing when people put that level of trust in you. Um but you know, I think I think what it is is they they put out feelers first. They email me very cordially, like like hey Sneed, been watching your content, like what you do, you know. And then the follow up is like, Hey, you know, I kinda wanna tell you some things. I want to discuss some topics, some of it's sensitive. Let me check my NDA. <laughs> you know, it's like it's literally some of that liability stuff comes into play. And I always tell them, Don't tell me anything you're not comfortable telling me rule number one i don't want to know anything that you don't want me to know i'm not going to ask you for anything i don't want to know your name if you don't want me to know it i'm not going to seriously i literally set it up like that because i don't want these people to feel there's any risk you know and i've never disclosed anything bro what do you think of my dish stuff i get the dish stuff fast like like weeks and months ahead i'm batting a thousand I'm not batting a thousand. The source is batting a thousand. You know what I'm saying? I don't take credit for any of this. It's not me. I'm just the guy in front of a camera with a microphone turned on. You know? So and I just I just want to help people. You know, and, and like I was saying about the T Mobile subreddit, the thongs are loud. It's what, like four or five, ten of them or something, but they're loud. And Dude, they're T Mobile. T-Mobile super supporters remind me of like fanboys in the console wars for like PlayStation and Xbox. Do you know what I'm talking about, Sneed? Yeah, they're you haters. Ever... They they hate but, everything. They hate no, anything. But no, I meant like, have you been a part of console wars back in the day, like when PS3 versus 360? Like, people would die for their company, and that's what <laughs> I think of like the hardcore T-Mobile fans. Like these people would die for T-Mobile. Yeah, but I I, I don't get it, man. But hey, real quick though, when you see these leaked internal documents and stuff like this from the companies, do you ever wonder why they don't just share that info? Like why don't like why they they they, they obviously feel it jeopardizes something. But like for I'll I'm gonna use a quick example real fast. QCI values. Why isn't that something that companies just market? Like like if you were trying to sell like a limited elite, right? Like I get your everyday consumer isn't gonna get it, but we also got to think about who the premium plans are directed towards, right? It's it's, it's kind of it's kind of complicated, Dennis. It's hard. It would be hard to parlay that into the cons the general consumer. I mean, you could you could market it as like you are the highest here, high like high good. Okay, choice. Dennis, here, here's what I got for you. You explain to somebody how QCI eight is better than QCI nine. Let's start there. Basically, I'd say it's like just this. talk about the number. You, oh. I, you have to convince me that QCI eight is better than QCI nine, right? So just the numerical game. Okay, so eight's better than nine. I thought nine was a higher number. That means higher price. See, that's the general consumer that's gonna. They're not really gonna get that. True. True. <laughs> But then you got to say, well, no, it's like finishing in first place. You're the best if you're number one. I was going to use it. Think <laughs> of it like a priority pass at Disneyland. Mm. Yeah. That was going to be the analogy I was going to use. Basically, think about like you get to skip in front of people. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, kind of. Right. The priority. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Like I said, though, it's I mean, it wouldn't be for the everyday consumer, but maybe somewhere in some fact sheet or something like that. You like like, you know, OK, I'll use an example. I know you don't build computers, but like when you buy a computer for like a processor and stuff like that, there's always a detailed specification sheet that talks about like TDP, talks about stock clock, boost clock, L3 cache, you know, support for maximum RAM on dim slots and all that good stuff. Right. Your everyday consumer doesn't care. They see I7 and think great. But those facts are all listed there for the person that's going to build the PC, right? To the same vein, 
you know, look at all the fine print that Timo manages to eke into their commercials. I am sure somewhere in that fine print that's super tiny that almost no one can read, they can mm-hmm. add a little star asterisk that says QCI 7 or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess if it became something that people really wanted to know, they could eventually respond to it. But so much of the QCIs with some of the companies is task-based QCI. It's not a true network sliced QCI and with the next generation of network core Dennis, like all this goes out the window, right? And then we're going to have a whole new protocol for QCI values, right? So if you have network slicing, does a QCI value even matter at that point? Hmm. I you know, mean, it, basically it, QCI only matters if there's not enough bandwidth to go around, but if you're connected to a millimeter or it's wave, it's there so- to ensure that there is that too, you know, uh, Isaiah said they could add to the network disclosure in the terms of service. Yeah. If you knew where to look for it so you could refer to it, I'm with you, Dennis. I just don't know. I mean, look at the crap they tell us, Dennis. We like look at the look at the T Mobile marketing. They tell us there's uh hundred and sixty five million pops of ultra capacity five G. Let's let's just unpack that. There are T Mobile sites with 100, 100 megahertz of N forty one and it's congested. And they call that on uh, ultra capacity. The maps are on are not accurate, right? Right. You told me that yourself. Okay, it's somewhat accurate when I look at the maps. So I guess it just depends. And honestly, I don't even know what a pop is. I've been in this thing wireless telecom for five years as a YouTube creator. I still don't know what a pop is, Steve, and I don't see how it matters. Speaking Point of, of the presence, coverage. I get it, but I don't know what that is. Speaking of coverage map, I wanted to share this real quick. Please, someone explain to me how this map makes any sense. <laughs> if this ain't the most optimistic MS pain I've ever seen, like, <laughs> explain to me how you have these little blotches of coverage here. Like, how is this ultra wideband 5G? Like, where? Like, if I if I had a picture of tower, right? Towers, pro- since they work in sectors, they would probably be almost like a triangle, right? Like a focal point cone, right? So in that logical sense, then if the coverage was good, it would be kind of like going like around like this, right? Like some over here, some over here, maybe some over here. But like it just splashed all over the place. And by the way, Sneed, the reason I'm showing you this is because I just want to show you Pittsburgh real quick. Like Mm -hmm. you look at the city, right? Oh, it's so slow to load. Oh, my God. All right, so you look at the city, right? It looks decent, right? Not even you, your, not even your home internet could help it out. <laughs> the map just. <laughs> All right, but but you look at this, right? Ultra capacity. It looks pretty decent in Pittsburgh for the most part until you mm-hmm. realize that this is all just basically glorified downtown, like Squirrel Hill, Shady Side. Like this is all like downtown. And honestly, as someone that's been driving through this recently, because uh, I was actually down from work for a few days because I was having issues, I had to go to an office to do stuff. Um, I actually got a chance to drive through the city, and I could tell you, my experience in Pittsburgh, I was not connecting to N41 like at all. It was still preferring standalone 71, even when I'm in all this blanketed like goodness. And then we come over here, right? You know, a pretty pop in the suburb. I mean, look, we got the airport right here, right? Mm-hmm. You would think this would be the darkest shade of magenta in the world. It's Pittsburgh International Airport. It's a very well-traveled airport. Like, it's not like a small airport at all. And like somewhere around here is the Robinson Mall. It's one of the biggest malls outside of um, outside of the one that has the Apple Store. Crap, what's it on a? Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. But like the coverage is like so random. And there's okay, so stores. so all right. So you see that little patch at the bottom? This one, a little bit to the left. This one. Okay, go ahead and zoom in on that for me, please. You see all that magenta, the dark one. Mm-hmm. That's all one site. That's the that's like the the antenna reach mm-hmm. of N forty one. Like, like when I I used to go on these engineering calls with with Zero Cool RF. You remember Zero Cool he used to come on yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would send me the schematics of the way that the the frequencies and the spectrum propagates. That's exactly that's the blueprint of how the frequency should be transmitting. And propagating so that's actually like theoretical who knows what geography is in play elevation topography buildings I mean let's be real if you are 
one mile away from an N41 site and there are obstacles in the way, it will affect signal strength. Now, if you're half a mile away, probably not. But if you're a mile away, it might. Especially since we already know that much of the N41 troubles come from the fact that by FCC rules, it occasionally has to be powered down due to interference. There's another problem that the thongs don't want to talk about. The realistic issues that N41 has in certain instances. I'm realistic about N41. I'm not calling it ultra capacity, and I know its limitations. It's great. I think it's awesome. But I'm not going to sit there and be in denial. And I'm not buying what Neville Ray is, say, is saying. This is the best mid-band out there for 5G. If you say so, dude. Real quick, though, before I put this to bed, you see this dot right here? I used to live in this apartment complex. Remember when I used to? Remember when I showed the speed test about how bad it was? Oh, that was your last apartment complex. That was my last apartment okay. complex. Look at all the beautiful purple there. You're right there in the heart of it, right? Yep. Never connected to N41, even on outside. So even if, these are outdoor maps, then. But I was outside. I was literally on top of like three stories, <laughs> dude. N41. It, it was a ghost. And like I said, remember I made. Remember I told you when I made the joke? Like literally two turns gets me to the tower. All right, you go. I can't zoom in any further, which is real unfortunate. But you go down this hill, right? Not even like this full hill. Like you just go down this hill, come pop over here. Somewhere in this area, this geographical area, there is a cell site sitting on top of a commercial building. Like legit, it's like right here. Mm -hmm. That's how close it is. So here's me. Here's so the what's cell that? Site. What's what's with the pink in that area? It's supposed to be close to that site. Why isn't it all purple? I have no clue. That's that's the thing that that's the thing that like impresses me. Like it doesn't make any sense. But but basically there was like a cell site here. I know there was a cell site over here. Like someone actually showed me an internal map. I have to look through Discord, but there was like surrounding me in this area, supposedly, there was like eight cell sites that could potentially cover me. Like so there was like one here, one here, one well, here. I, I think they're trying, Dennis. I just I think it's hard to do, I guess. Maybe. Or yeah. or it's just like I don't know. Like, I just don't know what to think, but like, I need to stop sharing my screen, but I don't know what the, th I don't know what to think, but like, apparently there's all these cell sites around me, but like, but like yet when it comes at the end of the day, real world experience, it's just awful. And apparently AT&T is not as dense. Like apparently, apparently T-Mobile has one, is supposedly one of the densest networks, but it does not show. It does not it's, show. Uh, I think. Uh, something that I've noticed is that in the urban setting, T-Mobile is dense. Hands down, they've got the density there. Once you get out of the urban and you get into the suburban, the sites get stretched out a little bit, which is where you kind of get the occasional call drop, the bad tower handoff, the live streaming issues, because uh, the RSRP starts to drop. And that that's the problem with the uplink. That's where you get the failed FaceTime calls. I did a speed test with Carlos on the phone with me. And I think I had like 100 by 50 on T-Mobile. It was a good speed test. Called him up on FaceTime video. It crashed. Yeah, but real, real quick, Sneed, this is not like a like, – I mean, maybe this is small in your eyes. To me, it's pretty large. The, the apartment complex I was in in that zip code, the population for that was just – it was 42,278 uh, people. And the zip code is relatively small. Um all things considered, I want to see if I, yeah, this is. I'm going to share my screen one more time, real quick. I'm sorry. No problem. I, like, if you're, oh, I didn't share my screen. Sorry, my bad. If you're looking at this, here's one five one zero eight. This is the zip code. It's just this little area right here. This little sliver. Okay. Okay. There's there's forty two thousand. What did I? Whatever I said. Some odd people in this little tiny area, just right there, which for Pittsburgh is a lot of people. That's a lot of people for Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh's not a big city. Like, it's I would call it like a second class city in terms of population. It's a traditional Midwest town. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's not a big city. So when you're talking that many people in a little area like that, that's a lot of people. That is. Yeah. So they had trouble in that area. Yeah. Apparently, other people were coming in too. Lavendi said Coriopolis PA is terrible with N41, and yet the car match says otherwise. So I don't. I just don't yeah, but know. is the is the issue that it's not as available as they say it is, or is it slow? Both. See, that's there lies the issue. Are they optimizing the sites properly? 
See, I be. think I think you and myself, Dennis, mm -hmm. I think what we're seeing is we're seeing inconsistency in engineering teams. You know, it, and I think that goes to show you, like, what's the standard of excellence, right? We know that Verizon has it. We know that AT&T has it. You could tell me. There's people that sh show me and tell me all the time. Verizon's got a bunch of band 13 only sites. I understand. They're not going to be fast. But you can't tell me that the signal isn't there. Right? You can't tell me that the engineering is bad. They just need to upgrade sites. That's just spending money in those places. Right? We have an issue with some of these T-Mobile N41 sites where they're problematic. So the spectrum is there. The sites are live. But, I mean, I'm having trouble with 5G. It's giving me fits. My next video... T-Mobile 5G is giving me fits. Dude, I'm just going to run that sim on LTE and call it a day. Dude, I'm convinced that all of the carriers should be ran on LTE at this point. Like, legit, even my AT&T line. Like, 5G is good on AT&T, at least in, a, like in uh, Pittsburgh. Like, the, it improves the upload speed and everything like that. But honestly, I find myself consistently going back down to the 5GE because it's more consistently fast. But more importantly, my battery life is, like, twice as good if I just turn off the 5G mm -hmm. on my phone. So honestly, at this point, like, I know 5G is the future. I know it'll be good. But, like, there are so many problems across the board. Like, for Verizon, it's clear you shouldn't be on 5G because NSA is, as you say, trash. <laughs> uh, AT&T's 5G, I would say it's hit or miss. It can if be it's good. If N5, then, yeah, it could be nice. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'll put it this way. It's real nice for the upload. Like, like, I've seen some of the highest uploads I've ever seen on at and and that was at my apartment when I did the lowest mobile testing. I was seeing, like, almost 100 megabits per second on upload, which is pretty freaking incredible. But the hit on the battery life is massive on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It just kills the battery. Running and, the 5G? Yeah, running the 5G. Yeah. And on T-Mobile, I told you, it's blocking calls. And even in the good areas where I've seen N41, if I run a few speed tests, my, my Galaxy S20 gets hot. It gets hot. I've heard that about that phone. And I bet you the same thing happens on millimeter wave as well. Like, it'll get hot, oh, and it will just force itself to disconnect from 5G anyway. Wow. It goes into LTE? Yeah. If you if you run continuous speed tests, if it, next time you get a chance, if you still have a Galaxy S20, go find an N41 and just start running speed tests back to back to back. Maybe after 10 minutes, the phone will get so hot, and it'll just force itself on the LTE. I've done it. I did. Um, I connected my Moto Edge Plus to the millimeter wave node at the bakery and I connected five devices to the hotspot and I was I speed tested it for like three minutes and the phone got hot and what I think is happening is I think the modem is getting taxed it's just it's getting pushed to the limit we're Dennis honestly we're probably two generations away from non heat throttled modems I think yeah. we're about to like so this next one will come out the X70 or whatever. X60, I think. It's the next one is the X60. I thought that was the or, current one. Or sorry, sorry, X65. Sorry. Okay, so if the 65 is the next one, the 70 will probably fix most of the issues, but I think it would be like the 75 or the 80 or whatever after that. That will be standalone 5G networking. Will be solid. We'll have obviously a lot of innovations that will be mainstreamed at that point. Carrier aggregation will be, you know streamlined at that point for 5g nr uh the beam forming will be incredible the modems will be dealing with millimeter wave better they'll be aggregating mid-band carriers you'll be seeing c-band and n41 combos right you'll be seeing cbrs and and c-band combos stuff like that uh millimeter wave and c-band we'll see a lot of that so i, I it's just it's time man you know we want to get ahead because we're always on the bleeding edge think about it all the topics we cover i mean we're digging in the we're digging in the crates, bro. We're going into the crates, and we're looking at what Ericsson is doing. No average consumer knows who, who Ericsson is. <laughs> they don't know Nokia. They don't know Ericsson. They don't know Samsung Electronics. They're going to say, what, the smartphones? They don't know that they make tower gear. I mean, we hey, got guys in the community that call out antennas by model numbers. I know. It, there's crazy. a whole sub. There's a whole subreddit where people will look at a cell tower and be like, "That's a T-Mobile Band 12 tower. That's a T-Mobile Band 66." Now I can I can do that kind of just because I've seen so many sites, but I can't name the brands. Like these guys are like, "Oh, that's Ericsson gear," and I'm like, "How do you know?" Like I can't get close enough to see the branding on it. I guess they do brand them, like they actually put the names, but I'm not that close. How the hell did you know? 
Dude, can I just say something, by the way? Remember I was telling you I was traveling through Pittsburgh? Here's something that surprised the living crap out of me. You familiar with the Fort Pitt Tunnel? Yes. Notorious dead spot for most carriers, right? No signal. Yeah. Right. Well, guess what? AT&T, five bars the whole way through. They got a DAS. 750 megabits per second speed test. It's a DAS. I know. Yeah, they put a DAS in there, and it might be running LAA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it Beautiful. might be man 46 Beautiful it, I mean, it's In the Fort Pitt tunnel Dude Moose what? You gotta tell Moose man Like oh my god He'll play the music and everything The Death Star music <laughs> I'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty sure they got small cells in there too man I'm gonna be oh, honest Oh Ah dude Moose If you're free you should step on man I never got to talk to you but I'd love to if you want to hop. It's a desk. But yeah, dude. Um, I have a question for you though. Real real talk, your project your predictions. When do you think 5G actually becomes as ubiquitously accessible as LTE? Like how many years do you think it's gonna take? And I'm talking like when I say 5G, by the way, I want to set a minimum precedent for performance here, because this is important. By minimum precedence, we have to at least see 50 megabits per second consistently or better. From 5G? Yes. I'm setting they a do, low... They do that as soon as C-band clears. I'm saying a low precedent because nah, LT they, probably nah, averages they, about 25. It's it's never going to be 50. It's going to be way above that. Really? It, yeah, because the bandwidth is there. Mm. So it, it's different. Like, think about LTE. We started with 5 and 10 megahertz channels. Now we're starting with 60 megahertz channels, 100, 160, right? So they're wider. So we're not going to be seeing... 50 megahertz right it's going to be faster but you're talking about it being like lte yeah and in the, let's just it, put by, it by like that this, I mean by availability okay let's put it like this if t-mobile has one hundred and five thousand cell sites you're basically saying they need to have 5g on every site because lt is on every site right Okay, so they have to upgrade every site. How long does it take for them to upgrade 105,000 sites? Now, they've already done some. I would estimate, based on their POPs calculation, their N41 is probably on 15 to 20% of their sites, right? I would say that their N71 is probably on half of their sites, maybe 60%. Maybe. I don't think higher than that. If they tell you otherwise, I think they're lying. Right? So under those terms, I'd say we're probably at least three years away if they keep today's pace. If they slow the pace, double that. Let's make it six years. Okay. Now, Verizon is motivated because they want to monetize for home internet. So to me, I feel like they may reach that a little bit faster because they're also playing from behind in 5G nationwide, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to want to pick up the pace. AT&T doesn't want to play second fiddle to Verizon, so they're going to pick up pace. It's, we're in a good place. We don't have many new sites to build for 5G to match LTE. But they're also going to densify too because that's the name of the game, right? To create capacity, <clears throat> you need more channels, wider channels, and you need more densification. All right, here's the hot question for you, man. Do you think the T-Mobile merger was a bad move? Do you think Sprint should be around? Uh, big shout out to Alexis. Thank you for the super sticker. Thanks for that dono. Um, it was a good move. You Sprint think it was sucked. good? Sprint sucked. Really? Yeah, Sprint sucked. The company couldn't make money. Mm -hmm. uh, their ownership group was trash, right? So we're talking Masayoshi Son and SoftBank. They obviously had no idea what they were doing in American business when it comes to wireless telecom. They thought they were going to come in here and make all these billions and not have to invest. Which is funny because so, in uh, Japan, they're really good. Oh, the, the SoftBank network? Yeah. Yeah, but look at the size of Japan. Yeah. And they tried to run Sprint like Japan, and you saw what happened. Sprint yeah. became a regional carrier. But I will just say one thing, though. Sprint, believe it or not, was better in Pittsburgh than T-Mobile. I believe it. There's markets where that that's going to happen, but Which in the is, state of <clears throat> excuse me, in the state of Ohio, Sprint was terrible. But but which is what makes it extra ironic. 
Like the fact that T-Mobile took over like the Sprint cell sites and somehow made it worse makes I it. I think extra- they stopped upgrading. They stopped tending to them. Uh, they stopped, uh, you know, upgrading. I mean, look, if a site was upgraded in 2016, mm-hmm. and now we got the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, and it's going to be decommed, why would you monitor it? I mean, you know how many small cells there are out there neglected from Sprint? Probably at least 30,000. Probably. Probably. You're probably spot on. I was going to say about 20, 30,000. I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'm saying but but T-Mobile had a layup is what I'm getting at. Like, anywhere that T-Mobile didn't have good coverage in the city, they easily had a layup. All they had to do was just basically flip the switch and make it T-Mobile network-based small cell. Like, even if they kept it as a crappy LTE cell site, it'd still be better than what they're doing right now. My only problem is here, I think because T-Mobile's market share is a little bit lower, I don't know. I don't think they're giving this market a lot of attention as they could be. I mean, I mean, what, I did. You remember when the, the guy mo- was sleeping behind the dumpster, right? No. What happened? <clears throat> I was on a Periscope live stream, and uh, I looked up at a tower site. It was in Parma, Ohio, and uh, they were modifying the site. It was getting N seventy one and forty one. As I was leaving the site, there was a truck parked on the side by the dumpster. The tower crew was sleeping by the dumpster. And all the gear for the antennas, you know, the 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 thing that harnesses the antennas, that, that metal rack, all that was in the middle of the parking lot on the ground. And the guy was sleeping behind the dumpster. And it was at that moment in time I realized that you can try to do well, you can intend to do well, but execution is everything. And if that's happening in Cleveland, it's probably happening in other places too. I wish. And, I could and, and honestly, Dennis, people yeah. attack me. That happens to Verizon. I see it all the time. I've never seen it here from anybody but T Mobile. Like, what you're telling me that, yeah, I catch a Verizon crews sleeping all the time. I've never seen it. And I've seen an ATT crews clockwork, bro. I've seen them install a small cell in a day mm-hmm. and then tune it and broadcast the next day. That's yep. what I'm seeing here. So if I'm seeing problems, you're mad that I'm reporting it? How the hell are they ever going to get better? Well, I'm supposed to hold their hand through. It's okay. It's okay. You'll get better. No. Shame on you. You need to be embarrassed. I'm calling a spade a spade here, dog. You know the emote. You know how it goes. I do, but I was going to ask you real quick, Sneed, how do you actually look at the market share? Because like, I tried Googling it. I'm generally curious, but my gut instinct says that Pittsburgh is also a small market for T-Mobile. There's no way. There's no way that they're outpacing Verizon or AT&T out here. Because like, I think about my job when I was like working at a gas station. Seven out of ten people I talked to, like the truck drivers that would come in, had truck Verizon. Drivers, truck drivers, always Verizon, dude. But, but like... But like I talk like and then I think about the people that I talk to on a daily basis, like maybe I'm going out to eat or something like that. They got Verizon. Even though Verizon's not the best in my market, like as I told you about the, in regards to capacity, everyone I know out here in Pittsburgh has Verizon. And then if it's not Verizon, it's AT and T. And I can't think of anybody in my friend group that has T Mobile out here, with the exception of myself. Like, there's no way T Mobile has a big chunk of the pie. You know what else I've seen? Dennis, What's I've that? seen tower crews walk away from T-Mobile construction sites <laughs> telling me that they didn't get paid. I believe that. <laughs> I was like, hey, aren't you going to take down that old gear? They said, no, we didn't get paid to do it. They won't pay us to take down the old antennas and the old radios. These are the things that I've seen here. But make sure you defend them. Get your thongs out. You know, make sure it's nice and tight running up real high. <laughs> You know, these people are crazy, man. Dude, you know what's extra sad, by the way? Remember when I told you there was problems with the LTE? When I was on HSPA+, Plus, I was getting better speeds sometimes than I was getting on standalone 5G. That's crazy. I didn't even know they were still running HSPA. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's still gear on sites running HSPA. It's crazy. There's yeah. probably only, what, um, maybe a couple of megahertz on it. There's probably it not was, much bandwidth. I want to say it was band, too, is what it was. Uh, in the thing, it's it shows PCS. up as- yeah, yeah it shows 1900 up as, megahertz. Yeah, yeah and then I, and it shows up as WCDMA in uh, the Samsung setting thing. Yeah. 
and I want to say it was 10 by 10 megahertz. You got that you got that Pikachu look, but yeah, I'm being dead serious. That's a lot. I know. (laughs) So it was fast. You were getting like five megabits or something. Uh, Try like 42. (laughs) What? They got 42 megabits of speed on 3G. Mm hmm. Oh mm-hmm. my god, I you may, you're making me want to go and test the three G network, <laughs> see what's left on there. It's everybody's, sad. Every, everybody's phone is is running LT and five G at this point, right? right? Which is why it was uncongested. But it's sad because a technology that came out in two thousand seven is outperforming a technology that is being deployed as we speak in modern day. There's something like- really wrong with that. Yeah, I don't I don't like the current performance of standalone, but it's in it's in infancy stages, so I'm not gonna Well okay, the problem but... is the problem is they're making it the default connection, right? Right. That's the problem. See that they should be making the NSA the default connection because there's more there's higher. Because yeah, then you can there. at least carry aggregate with the LTE bands. But here's the yeah. thing too. That forty two megabits is still better than the LTE even. Like let's crazy, man. Let's let's just take a quick moment. It's it's ten fifty one right now, okay? It's ten fifty one. I know that's not I mean I would say we we've peaked out past peak peak traffic times about now, right? Mm-hmm. Fair fair statement. Let's let's just do a quick speed test on our good boy Timo. I'll do one on 5G first. I'm connecting the band 66. I already know um and probably aggregated with NR71. Um so here's a quick 5G test. We're looking pretty not too shabby. We got some decent latency here on the test. We're getting about mm, 20ish megabits per second. Which connection is this? 5G? This is 5G. We're starting with 5G. So we're doing pretty good. I mean, this looks decent, right? 25 meg. That's acceptable, you know? It's below the uh, the national average, but anyway. I mean, this is good for this is a good showing for Timo. We're double digits. <laughs> and the upload the upload's actually the best I've ever seen from T Mobile. Nice. This is good. This is good. Okay. It's usually round three. So that's how I know it's not congested right now. All right, so that was five, uh that was five G. That was five G. <laughs> let's go into let's go into connections here real quick. What are we switching it to? Uh, we're gonna do LT next. Okay, let's do LT. That one should be the fastest, right? That's what we're expecting. Uh, most carriers, most bandwidth. Theoretically, it should be. <laughs> or it will just do one of these as it thinks. Go ahead and uh, yeah, close, the, force yeah. close the app, and then re- relaunch it. Might have to do an airplane mode as well with it, but we'll see what happens here. Let's try again. Yeah, that's true. All right, here we go. Won't reach. Yeah. All right, so we're we're cooking here. We're getting the same latency that we got on five G. And oh, see that little spiky spike there? Thirties. Yeah, we're getting in the thirties. I know that's not a big improvement, but when that spike happened, it's because it, it carried aggregate with band twelve. That's how I know. That's Five band. megahertz. Yeah. That it makes look at the upload though. It makes a difference, Sneed. Sure does. And so it's probably band sixty six, band twelve right now, if I had to guess. If I go into my settings, I'm willing to bet that's what it is. Um, is this um what do we what, we're on the T Mobile one? Yeah, this is uh no Magenta Max. So yeah, Magenta it's band, so yeah, it's carry aggregate. So yeah, it was band twelve with band sixty six, then band twelve just went away after the speed test ended. So <laughs> That was uh that was that and then I actually haven't tested HSP plus in my house when I was Let's doing that HSP it, plus but let me see how's if the I... signal looking man I'm I'm curious. Well I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to force it to connect to HSP. Oh I have you know what I have to do I have to go into band select that's what I have to do let me go into band select here real quick we'll do uh, launch band selection tool uh, we'll do band selection let's see we need it's no, not LT band. Two. It'd be it'd be all the WCDMA bands, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah it, it, I think it's two bands. You're gonna have you're gonna have PCS, and I think there's gonna be some. What else did they put on that side? Probably some low band. I just did all the WCDMA bands to see if I'll connect. I'm pretty sure it's WCDMA two. There's gotta be. Some yeah, it is. It's WCDMA nineteen hundred. Yeah, I'm connected to the HSPA plus. Wow. It, first off, let's look at the fact that I got five bars right now. That wasn't happening before, so that's a first. Um, let's uh, <laughs> let's look at the uh, let's look at the connection. So for this site, it is oh, it's PCS and eight, so it's all mid band. They don't have any low band. Okay. No right. So for this site, it looks like it is band two that I'm connecting to. 
and is they're saying Car- AWS. Wait, hold up. Is it Carrier aggregating HSPA Plus connection? Oh if it God. does, it would be the uh, it would be band four. It would be I AWS. think it might be. Let's try a speed test. I that's have 1. never 1.9 gigahertz, and that's 2.1 gigahertz. I've never ran a HSPA test at this house, so we'll see what happens. Okay, this is nobody's this on is, it, right? Like hardly anybody's going to be on that network. Well, this is about what I expected from my house, but it's seven-ish megabits per second. Hey, after the show, I want you to go outside and test that. I will. <laughs> I'm curious. And then yeah, there's uplink's the uplink's bad. Yeah. Uplink is bad. Yeah, I didn't say the uplink was good, but the downstream so, so was if, good. So if you had a congested 5G and LT signal, you could boot it down into 3G and get something going. I I I could. What do you think the call quality is like on that 3G? Actually, honestly, probably better than the LTE call quality. <laughs> like, no joke. No joke. I'm not joking with you, Sneed. With how bad the call quality has been at times, there has been times where I have went in and I have put my phone back on edge to place a proper call. Oh, my God. I'm not joking. So I think that's it's good. Either- thing you have an Android, don't you? Uh, this is the so okay. This is the reason I have an Android on T-Mobile because they're the network that requires me to mainly do these types of things. iPhone on AT and T because AT and T plays nice with iPhone, um, but yeah, that makes T- sense. T-Mobile requires Android. But uh, I'm real sad. I wish I was down in a. I'll just say I was in a place called Chippewa when I ran my HSPA Plus test when I was getting the 42 megabits per second. I was down there at the doctor's office getting my shot. And I wish I could just magically teleport myself there because I was impressed. I was real impressed by the fact that H. First off, I was impressed that HSPA Plus was still existing. But <laughs> secondarily, I was impressed by the level of speed and performance that I got. Um, Actually, real quick, let me just go through my speed test results here real quick. I'm going to show you one other thing. I'm going to go into my history real quick. I'm going to show you an N41 test that I had. Um. I, I don't remember if I showed this already or not, but this was N41 80 megahertz channel. I can't remember if I showed this already or not. But 101 down, 18.7 up, that was the ping. 101 down, 18.7. 132 ping? Yeah, that was the ping. That was for oh. N41 5G. And then here, um, here again was another test on that same cell site. Better download, 253. Upload 19.2, but ping 125 with a 14 jitter. Like so the so the speed's better, but you're still having trouble with the ping. Right, right. And then on the topic of uh, I, no, I already showed you the four megabits per second down one. I already showed you that one. I know I did. But what's funny is if I go back, like way back, because I've ran a lot of speed tests throughout my time, I know I have to have a good 5G test somewhere in here. <coughs> There's so far it's so rare. I'm actually having to scroll quite a bit back. Oh my god. Um wow, do I really not have a single good 5G phone within like the past two three months? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is sad. I'm scrolling dude, I'm all the way back into 530 of 2021 here looking for a good 5G test. That's wild. Come on, Dennis, find it, man. Hey Alexis, take care of yourself. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Bruh, it's so bad I literally haven't been able to find one. I'm only <laughs> back into 411 of 2020. Basically, I guess that highlights the point that it's real, real bad. Um, I mean, here's a decent test where the ping was actually good, but this is all the way back in, like, I don't even remember when this test was ran. But it it's 81.6 by 10.5, 18 ping. That's a good ping, 9 jitter. That's an N41 uh, test? Yeah, that was on 324 of 2021, and the N41, I remember that test, was only 40 megahertz. But pff, that's that's quite the uh, – quite the th- okay, I finally found some decent ones. Here we go. 426 down, 36.3 up. That was N41, I want to say 60 megahertz, if, if memory serves me correctly. But I had to go all the way back to um, – well, Dennis, that's actually above the average. Uh, they Neville Ray kind of indicated that the goal is to be at 100 megahertz bandwidth national, and they're trying to hit a 400 megabit per second average. Yeah, so but you're, Snead, you're pretty I, much right there. 
I had to go all the way back into March to find these decent speed tests. So you're, so you're saying that these these connections are starting to slow. These connections are like unicorns is what I'm trying to say. If I get one, <laughs> it's like a rare exception. Oh my God. It, it'd be like if your wife came home and gave you a kiss on the cheek and you were like, oh, thanks, honey. I wasn't expecting it, but I enjoyed it for the brief moment that it was there. Yeah. But well, if I, it's going to help some people, I think, um, you know, whoever's able to get connected to it. The it really depends. I, th- I think you're onto something. So you were talking about the market share. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why it's not as ubiquitous. Maybe the market share hasn't commanded the pace of an upgrade. Like New York City, you know, is getting a huge swing oh, yeah. on 41 sites. So- SoCal is going to get a lot. Uh, South Beach, Miami, you know, South Florida. You know, there are certain T-Mobile markets, right? El Paso, Texas, I hear T-Mobile is like 50-plus percent market share. Yeah, I it's just... Incredible. I guess here's my scoop, right? So you were talking earlier, T-Mobile's movement for growth is to expand out into rural America, which I can appreciate and I can respect. But why not target Pittsburgh? It's low-hanging fruit. If, you're, if your market share is low, right, and all you have to do is just slap down some they of that... must have beautiful- a hard time with Pittsburgh. They're not converting. I mean... But they're not converting because their coverage is bad. So if they get good coverage, they would convert. Like, well, I said the same thing about the CLE also. You know, like, they, they're cheaper than AT and T. Well, sure. Yeah, they're cheaper than AT and T and Verizon. I I know for a fact that there are definitely a good amount of people that have Boost in Pittsburgh. So those are easy conversions to postpaid or Metro. We do. We have a lot of Boost customers here too for prepaid. Yeah, yeah, like Boost is big. There's a Boost mobile store in like everywhere. Like I, they're they're literally everywhere. I think there's Boost stores even in Best Buy. Like that's they're like everywhere. But I can't believe we went on for three hours. Is there anything that you want to talk about? Anything at all in your brain? I don't know, dude. I think we're good, man. I think we covered a lot. I mean, my goal was to be on for an hour. Usually, whenever I do any type of podcast, but we killed it. We're at three hours, dude. So we, we set a record we, for you. Yeah, we definitely held it down for a while. So, uh, big shout out to Stetson for coming by. He he bounced like probably about an hour ago. <laughs> so we we did an hour on top of that. And uh, Dennis, thanks for coming on too, man. I appreciate you. Um, you know, there this is you guys are my friends. So you're more than welcome if you ever need to come on to the show. You know, my podcast to promote anything going on in your channels, any projects, any things that you guys are up to. Just let me know. The invitation is always open to you. And if you ever need me for any reason on your show, it would be a pleasure to be on as well. Sneed, right. I promise you, man, we will definitely be having you on. Uh, maybe maybe when the iPhone 13 comes out, my man, Ooh. we do maybe a big old, maybe we do a watch party. We what just get a watch. Two months away? We're about six, September. Seven, September. Isn't it September like 26th normally when they come Sounds out with about, that? right. Yeah. Because they usually come out with it about a week after my birthday. My birthday is the 18th, so it's usually around like the end of September they start pre-orders. Absolutely tremendous. We get you an iPhone for the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> do not. Do not do that, please. Uh, <laughs> I would feel real bad. Um, but got to get moose with Dennis. Yeah, we do got to get moose with Dennis. Um, that needs to happen if you're somehow rewatching this moose. Yeah. Come on, um, let's, let's make it happen, bro. But all right, let's let's let you spend some time with your family and your kids, and then I should probably do a thing called sleep. Um, <laughs> uh, Sounds good, man. But uh, guys, in the SMT Army, I was I was I'm very happy that I got to be on. Uh, please, sincerely, if you, any of you guys can come check out the Best Phone Plans podcast, we get really exciting guests. I know we don't necessarily do all the news to- like news topics like Sneed does per se. But I feel like we get a nice spice of life with some of the guests that we got on. Like we had the CEO of U, um, of US Mobile on Ahmed Katak. We've had lead analysts lead analysts on from places like PC Mag. Um, we had like a, a financial expert slash telecom expert um, uh, named Roger Etner on. Roger's uh, the best man. Love Roger. Yeah, Roger was great. Uh, the VP of Mint Mobile mm-hmm. Marketing was on. Um, so we you guys, we get you guys run a great show. You really so do. yeah. We get some good guests. If that sounds like anything you guys would be interested in, I highly encourage. And we also do after shows that can get pretty wild at times and pretty exciting. <laughs> um, that are way more casual. We'll be there. But, I'll be definitely pushing the podcast. I'll get you guys on the community tab. Uh, definitely on Twitter. Uh, we we want to see the channel grow and we want to see the podcast grow for sure. 
I want to pick you up with us. So we'll get you on and make sure we shout you out to our, our recent uh, audience as well. Amazing. But all right. Thank you. All Peace, right. guys. Sounds good. Take it easy, y'all. Good night. Peace.